I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, that was a bit weird, wasn't it? <laughs> that didn't quite go according to plan. Hey, everybody. Quick sudden start there. Hello. Oops. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this rather awkwardly started. Oh, I'm a Sunday. Hello, hello. I'm just... Uh, everything. It's, everything's falling over and breaking. It's all nonsense. Hello. <laughs> well, that was different, says Dad. At least I got a little fanfare. That was quite cool. <laughs> oh, it's going to be one of them days. Hey, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Sunday. It is, therefore, war. My camera's moved as well. God damn it. Everything's going to pop. Hang on. I need to I need to just focus now. Right. And I've got the wrong glasses on and it's all gone weird. <sighs> Start as you mean to go on, Fox. Start as you mean to go on. Let me just check the focus. I think that's in focus. I'm not wearing the right glasses, so it could be well out. I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> Welcome on. It's Sunday. It's Warhammer Sunday. It's all gone wrong. Uh, if you've not seen one of these before, you all have, you're all regulars, but if you've not seen one of these before, basically, uh, during the week I'm doing all kinds of things. At this moment, I am doing my Master Grade Cesarbi for George, my Patreon reward build, but at the, on the weekends, I put all that in a box, and I seal it up, and I put it away, and I crack on with, normally, my Warhammer army, the unending forces of the Holy Contrivance, but I've not been doing them for a while. Uh, for the last few months, I've been trying to catch up with my Warhammer Conquest, just getting stuff built, so it's built and out of the way, ready for painting later in the year. <clears throat> and for the last few weeks, I've actually put that to one side, and I've been working on the uh, little uh, Funko Pop Space Marine that I got um, when it was uh, my local store's Warhammer, uh, my work, bleh, words, my local store's birthday, or something, I don't know, it was Warhammer Day, so I don't know. Anyway, I got one of these. And I've been painting it as an angry marine. <clears throat> now, as with all my shows, uh, I need to open the window because it's too warm, but I can't get to the window now because all the cameras are set up. Uh, as with all my shows, uh, the whole point of this show really is just for you guys to hang out in the chat and have a good time. I just happen to be here doing some work in the background uh, while you guys get to listen to me waffle on inanely for three hours. Uh, as always, though, it's all about you. You're all hanging out. If you want to be in the chat, you can see the chat here on the screen. <clears throat> but there is, of course, the live chat where that chat is coming from. Uh, if you're watching this somewhere embedded, like on Facebook or Twitter or Patreon or Hello, uh, then you can't obviously access the live chat. All you need to do is hit the little YouTube icon that's down here in the bottom right hand corner of the viewer somewhere. That will take to the YouTube page and you can join in the live chat. And you want to join in because it's a good time. It's a good laugh. Everybody's lovely. And we'll be giving some stickers away as well later on anyway. So you want to join in just for the fun of it. Now, as always, if you want to ask me a question, I've got my iPad here just off screen in front of me with all the chat going on. Uh, if you want to ask me a question or get my attention, you can do. Just put the chat, your comment in big fat capital letters, the whole thing. Because uh, I'll be looking down here and doing painting stuff, so I might not see your comment. But put it in big fat capital letters. Uh, if you want to, you can do a little super chat. You can do the little dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window. Uh, that puts it in a colour box and makes an animation that pops up up here. And therefore, I have no chance at all of missing your comment. Uh, or if, you, if you've got access to chat at all, no matter what you do, uh, you can, if you want to, bot me an email. My email address is always on the bottom corner of the screen down here, fox at modelmakingguru.com. Uh, I will receive it during the stream, but whether I get a chance to read it during the stream is a bit more hit and miss, but you never know. But do join in, do join in the chat, it's good fun. Uh, as always, uh, the whole point of this is for me to do nonsense for three hours and you guys just have something to listen to, so hopefully we'll have some fun. Don't forget, as always, we do have the ongoing stream boss battle. Uh, which is currently not model making guru because I messed it up. It's Cy Reynolds or Kevin as we know him. He's the current stream boss. And the point of stream boss battle is to is for you to potentially win three to well two to three hundred. Well, actually, get it right. Two to five hundred quid's worth of Warhammer Games Workshop and Warhammer stuff. Uh, basically, whoever the stream boss is, it's your job to try and knock him down to zero health. That's his health bar. You can see he's had some knocked off already by the black bits. Um, whoever gets him to zero basically becomes the new stream boss. Uh, and how do you get him down to zero? You do super chats and you uh, do tips through the tip jar, which is streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru. The bigger your tip or the bigger your super chat, the more of his health you take off. And if you get him to zero, you win or basically all the money that's been raised through this tips and super chats. And when Simon won, he won 499 quid. And what you basically do is I tell you how much you've got. You tell me what you want to order. Uh, if you're in the EU or the UK, you can order from Games Workshop. You can order stuff from Forge World or you can order stuff from Goblin Gaming. If you're outside the EU or not in the UK, you can order from Games Workshop or Forge World. Before you do any of that, though, do make sure that your country can have stuff delivered by at least Games Workshop and Forge World. Uh, or if you're in the EU, by uh, Goblin Gaming. 
So get doing your super chats and tips and everything. Uh, don't forget, of course, as well, this channel. This channel is supported by, and this show is supported by, my very good friends at Goblin Gaming. There's a link in the description below. Uh, they basically are the one-stop shop for all your tabletop model making and gaming needs. Not just Warhammer, but everything from Warhammer, Malifaux, Conflict 47, uh, Pokemon, Magic the Gathering, all kind of card games, board games, Catan, all kinds of, you know, traditional board gaming and stuff. They're awesome guys. They're awesome, awesome guys. They do offer 20% off RRP on all Games Workshop, Malifaux and Conflict 47 stock. So if you use that link that's in the description below this video, that's my affiliate link. Not only do you get the massive savings, uh, you also get to help support this channel because I make a little bit of income every time you place an order through that link. So make sure to replace anything in your favourites if you've been to them before. Make sure to use that link that's in my description below and you'll be really, really helping me out while you're saving yourself some money. And we have a message from Skullfish, who just put a super chat through. Thank you very much, Skullfish. He says, Soupfish, Soupfish. I'm really warm. There you go, there's the, the weird thing is, it pops up on my iPad in the suit in the chat, like 30 seconds before it actually pops up on the screen there, which is really weird. Thank you very much, Skullfish. You've taken a little bit of Simon's health off. All right. Really wish I'm going to try and open my window. I might knock the camera, but I need to, it's getting really warm with all the lights on. Give me one moment. This may go horribly wrong. I'll keep talking to you so it's not just a frozen screen. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Right, reach over there, get to the window, and do that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. One, oh, nearly that, nearly that. Oh, that's better. Oh, I can feel the warmness leaving the room. Oh. There we go. So anyway, let's crack on. So let's have a look and see who is in chat before we crack on with some actual work. So, Chris at Gross Model says, stop fiddling with the mat. I've got to do something with my hands. Right, so uh, first in was Pascal, about five minutes before I even set the stream up. And he does say that I can confirm that in the chat, and I can. Uh, about five minutes before the stream was even in, existed, he was in the chat. Uh, we have Chris at Gross Models, welcome Chris. Pascal, of course. Uh, we have more Drac at 09. Uh, does anyone know any good coffee bean mixes, says Mordraka, that I can track down? The current ones taste like Nurgle's mud. Um, yeah, ask Spiddy Q8 if he comes in, because Spiddy Q8 knows everything about coffee that there is to know. Uh, so I've got David Butcher, that model is in. Uh, Dave and Chris are, are mods, two of my mods. I have many mods. They're all lovely, lovely, lovely people. They're all absolutely awesome people, and they'll look after you. They'll keep you on the right track. If you cross them, they will snap you in half and swallow your cerebrospinal fluid and then dump you in a pit, bury you for all time with worms. They'll do all that if you cross them. So don't cross them. But if, you, if, you, if you're all right with them, they're really, really lovely guys. Uh, was that a bit extreme? <laughs> we have Jordan Capuano is in afternoon all, says Jordan. Eric Graham, morning, afternoon all. Uh, just Django, I'm really early today. Hello. Beyond hope, I couldn't get here before 7 a.m. Pascal, I was busy painting my new kill team. Uh, Raging Bassist is in. Hello all, I shall be back shortly in time for the stream. I hope you're back now. Uh, Ghost Lyle says, I've got to say this now that I've set myself a thing here. He says, pineapple, 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 pineapple. I really, I'm going to have to stop doing that. It's going to get ridiculous. Um, Eric Graham says, this is Sunday, right? I don't know. It felt like it. Uh, Alberto Grajales is in. Good morning from the US. I hope I pronounced that correctly, Alberto. Um, if you're all here before dad, says Jordan, are we all classed as early anyway? Uh, shush, he will know we are here, says David Butcher, that model. Uh, ba doo Beyond Hope says, Pascal, it's a bit unfair. You camp in overnight in a tent waiting for the stream to open. We'd never get in the stream before you. Some people have. Sometimes Simon's been in before Pascal. Pascal has a monitor of like a bank of like 35 monitors and he sits there like a sort of, like one of the guys in his evil volcano lair monitoring all the interesting streams all the time, all the channels. So he can be in all the chats at the same time. He's got like 32 keyboards as well. Uh, Nim is in. Obviously she's woken up. Morning. Uh, Jordan Capuano, or Beyond Hope says to get some bickies. Uh, Jordan asks if it's chocolate digestives or Maryland cookies. Well, it should be chocolate digestives because Maryland cookies are old people's biscuits and they're not very nice. Chocolate digestives, I, stop, I need to stop banging my hand on the desk. Chocolate digestives or chocolate hobnobs. Other than that, you've got the wrong biscuits. 
Um, Alberto says, I'll be in and out of the chat today. Hopefully I can finally get me a Fox sticker. You never know. Dad is then in. Dad is in. Dad's another one of your mods. Dad's a lovely, lovely, lovely fella. Lovely little fella. Afternoon one and all says, Dad, you can tell the mods because they're spanners. They've got spanners. Uh, Let's have a look. Uh, we have... Uh, na, 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 na. Eric Graham says the pros and cons of building space marines the pros they have so many options the cons they have so many options it's pretty much true uh, uh, David Butcher that model says he's not quite managed to fully move into his uh, man cave yet because his, uh, his daughter's moving out of her bedroom moving out she's moving house and leaving home so he's moving into that room it's his man cave but he's not done it yet because they're not able to move all the stuff out quite quick enough he says the Toyota Yaris they've got is not big enough basically only moving out a bit at a day so dad just says, stick it on the roof. Uh, if you strap anything on a Yaris, it will either crush or the wind will carry it away, says Eric Graham. It's pretty much true. Uh, mug of Tetley's tea and Hovis digestives. Ooh, it's just beyond hope. Mm, Hovis digestive, they are nice. They are nice. You might get away with that, but they're not chocolate. But we might let you get away because they're not. If they were just normal McVitie's digestives, we'd have to ban you for being old and boring. But if the Hovis digestives, yeah, we'll let you get away with that. Um, I did in the chat completely get Beyond Hope and Beckstorm uh, confused. Not confused in my brain, but because I, you, you type in a name and it auto completes it and gives you options. It just kind of auto completed it and decided um, I was talking to one and not the other. So there you go. I, I, I replied to Beck, but it was actually Beyond that I was talking to. So apologies, that's that's YouTube for you. Why I yoda? <sighs> And then I pressed all the wrong buttons. So it's a normal start to the stream. Uh, who else do we have? We have uh, Snowman HFC is in. Welcome, Snowman. What does HFC stand for? Do I want to know? Do, family friendly. It's not family friendly, really. Don't forget, of course, this is my stream. It's nothing to do with my e-models stuff on a Monday uh, where it's family friendly. So if you want to use big grown up rude words and things like that in chat, feel free. I don't care. I really don't care. I mean, don't be a complete tool because if you're a complete tool and you start doing... The, the politics or the religion or the racism or the, anything like that you just be kicked out so or timed out so you don't do that but you can use rude words if you're, you're swearing i don't care as long as i don't read them out my monetization is safe i think uh who else have we got uh thy creator is in hi dad says thy creator welcome thy creator uh chris at gross model says anyone want a headache i finish with mine <laughs> oh no take lots of drugs uh, Schoolfish says YouTube reminder things sucks. Yeah, either send you when I start. Oh, if you are subscribed, by the way, if you're not subscribed, uh, please do subscribe to this channel. If you are subscribed, make sure to hit the notification bell because if you don't hit that, then when I start a stream, you won't know. And I'm doing a lot of streams over the next few weeks, like throughout the week, because I'm doing the Sasabi. So make sure you do hit that bell. It doesn't always tell you on time. Sometimes it tells you like the next day, which is not much use. But it never tells you before I've started. I'll give you that. Uh, Lynn Dipple is in. Hey, Lynn. Hi, Dee. Sorry, boss, I overslept. Please don't find me much needed sleep. Hey, Lynn, it's just nice to have you in the chat. So, welcome, welcome. Uh, Reese at Re RGC Models Official is in. Hello, hello all. Beaker is here. Haha. -ha. Yes, if you don't know, everybody calls Reese Beaker because of his hair. He's got the most wonderful white man's afro. It's kind of awesome. It's just, it's just you have to see it. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Jamie Bone is in. There we go. He's asking Dad about football. I'll I'll avoid that one because I don't do football. I don't understand sport. It doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, welcome, Jamie. Uh, I'm going to guess Jamie, chicken roast chicken. I'm going to guess for your uh, for your answer later on. Uh, oh my God! You haven't been in here forever. Says uh, Nim to Lynn. Yeah, Lynn. As Lynn's often working on a Sunday, so I timed it badly. Uh, Beckstorm has been working on a Master Grade at Advanced Hazel. The stream just started as I finished watching an old E-Models one. Save me from boredom. There you go. Edward Leonard is in. Morning all. Welcome, Edward. Uh, -doo -doo -doo. Talking about football and cricket as well. Fox, what about shortbread biscuits? They're not... You kind of have them separate from, like, biscuits that you have with tea or, like, if you... Like, cho chocky bickies you can dunk in your coffee and, like, digestives and stuff that are boring, but... Hobbies, you know, things that you can dip in your tea and coffee they're kind of sitting down with a cup of tea or coffee and biscuits but shortbread is more like i don't know you don't really dunk them in your drink they're kind of different shortbread biscuits are nice don't get me wrong i love shortbread but they're kind of different they kind of count they're outside the circle of of, of that i think um schoolfish says spanner mm, let's have a look foxes have the best biscuits uh i do i certainly do it's jumped Everything jumped. Now I've lost everything. 
Uh, it moved, it moved. Foxes have the best biscuits, no no pun intended, says Beck Storm. Uh, Nim says, quick, someone in the USA send Fox some Girl Scout cookies, Girl Guides for you in the UK. Schoolfish says, tool! If you don't buy Girl Scout cookies, don't they like break your door down? And don't they kind of say, hey, do you want to buy some Girl Scout cookies? And by the way, nice house you've got here, be a shame if something happened to it. Or is that just a rumour? I don't know. Uh, Jamie Bone says, how did you guess, Fox? I was going to have roast chicken and all the trimmings for my tea. Because every every week, more or less, you say you're going to have that for your dinner. And I get really, really hungry because I start thinking about roast chicken dinner with all the trimmings. And I'm like, oh, and whatever I'm having, I suddenly think I'm having like, you know, whatever sausage and chips. And I'm thinking, I don't want my dinner now. I want the roast chicken with all the trimmings. So I always get jealous of you. That's why. I know you don't always, everybody. It seems like you have it quite often and I get quite jealous. Uh, Andy McLeish is in, he says, hello, I'm to make a mess and general idiot of myself. Welcome Andy, you don't get a chance to come in very often, so it's nice. Uh, I've already made a complete spoon of myself with the stream itself, so I, I wouldn't worry about making a, a spoon of yourself. Uh, uh, Gaz Vickers is in, welcome Gaz, welcome, welcome. And I think we're pretty much up to date, so Dad is about to ask the most important question of the entire day. Uh, Nim says, yes, we do that. Schlep those boxes for over 10 years. Yes, they do say, would you like to buy some Girl Scout cookies? A nice house you've got here. Be a shame if something happened to it. So Dad asks the most important question, which you can answer while I crack on with some work, is what's on your bench and what's in your belly? So yes, what are you working on right now? And what are you have, either having for your dinner or what will you have? It, well, I'll start again. What are you going to have for your dinner later? Or what do you have? Wow. Hello. Hang on. Enormous mug of coffee. What is on your bench that are you are working on right now? And what are you going to have for your main meal of the day later on? Or if you haven't had it yet, what will you be having? Let me know in the in the, uh, in the the chat. So I can get really, really hungry and know vicariously from what, what you said, what you're having for your dinner. Now, what's the plan for today? Well, I am carrying on with my Funko Pop uh, Spes Maureen. Uh, if you remember, this was the, the grey one you get that comes unpainted. So I decided to paint mine in the style of At Angry Marine. I shall say you At Angry Marine. Uh, the uh, angry marine is here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Now, as you can see, it has rude words on it. It's got swears and things. Uh, and I'd, I was kind of just trying to decide what colour to paint it. And I thought, you know what? Let's just do an angry marine because it's funny. So there's going to be... I've got some writing to do on this. I'll be using inks for that. And I've got to paint the, the, the thing on the pauldrons. But it's pretty simple colour. It kind of just makes me think of Pikachu. So it's kind of Pikachu colours, which is sweet. Uh, but there you go. And I'm working in yellows and reds at the moment anyway, <clears throat> because I'm doing George's Cesarbi in the um, Shanghai Dragons colour scheme. I couldn't remember them. Uh, so it's all reds and yellows. So I'm kind of in the, in the zone for doing reds and yellows at the moment. So, so yeah, so that's what we're doing. So we've got a lot to do. So far, what we've done is we have, of course, primed it. We have um, done the base yellow colour. We've done a, a, a post shade dry brush session on the yellow, which is you do your base colour, then a shade. Then you go over with the dry brush of the base colour and then a dry brush of a couple of highlights. We've also glazed it in some Lamenta's yellow to make it bright. Uh, I've done the metals and I've gone ahead and uh, at the end of last week, uh, I added all the red parts, did a couple of coats of Mephiston red for that. So we're basically doing what we've done on the yellow. We've now got to do on the red parts, which is the dry brushing, the shading, and the dry brush highlighting. We've got to be more careful now. The reason we did the yellow first is because most of the armor is yellow. So we can do all that without having to worry about getting the yellow paint and all the other bits. Now we've got the red bits, we have to be a bit more careful and focused now because we don't really want to get red on the yellow paint, but there's only a few bits of it, so it's not a biggie. So what I need to do is I need to, as always, the lights are on, it temperature's gone up and my nose starts to run, so just blow my nose a little bit. Ugh. Ugh. So, what I'm going to do is, that didn't work at all. Now, what I'm also planning to do is, I've done the metallics. This little yellow bit on the rifle here, that's actually going to be like a dark colour, so that's fine. I'm going to paint that one. I paint the, the underarm and the dark grey or black bits. Uh, I have painted that on the back because I like painting that. I know it's not accurate, but I don't care. Uh, I do need to paint the aquila on the chest, but that's actually going to be white, not grey or gold or anything. The, the skull will be gold, I think. Uh, oh no, the skull's going to be red because on the on the Angry Marine, uh, it's actually uh, that red, not happy face. But I can't really do that without sculpting and everything, but I can't. I haven't got the arms, so I'm just doing it as it is on there. I'm not going that much into detail. Uh, we do have some gold to paint on the rifle there. Uh, 
what else have we got to do and then that's about it really got to then paint the markings on it and then we'd have to do the eyes as well of course uh, but we're going to get that done so I shall crack on first the first thing I'm going to do is I think I will get the remaining base colors down first before we start doing the shading on the red so I need to do the blacks or the dark greys I need to make sure he's stuck down properly because his foot's lifting up off the floor now that's not really good let me get a, spl a spudger so I can spudge his blue tack uh, but how are I hope you've all been well I hope you're all good uh, this blue tack is really sticky I'm going to have to do something to get it off his foot. It's not really the most excellent practical solution having blue tack to hold him down onto this base because it does end up with the blue tack going on the bits where I need to do painting. But they're all going to be yellow anyway, so it's fine. Uh, but I need to squish him down a bit more. We, what, so we need to do the black. We need to do the white for the aquila. Uh, we need to put a gold coat down for the gold parts. Ob obvs. Uh, I need to put down a, a white base coat for the eyes because they're going to be like a glowy colour. Glowy! I think that's that then. Then we can do some shading. So I'll start with that. We'll start with the blacks uh, and then we'll work our way through. So I'm going to start. I'm not going to paint black as black because the one thing you learn about painting is uh, if you need to paint something black, you can't really do much once you've painted it black. You can't put any shadows on it because once it's black, you can't go darker than black. And it's a bit harder to do highlights because you're trying to put a highlight on a black colour. So what I'm actually going to do is start with Skaven Black Dinge, which is a kind of dark German grey colour. I need my... Where's my spatula pen? There is my special pen. There it is. There she is. There she is. Got my spatula pen for getting paint out of the pots. Uh, so we've got like that. So I've got a bit of... Bit of this gave him like dinge on my wet palette. Now, if you don't know what a wet palette is, I do recommend you make one. You can buy them, but I don't recommend you spend. Move that over there. I don't really recommend that you spend, um, you know, ten or fifteen, twenty quid in a wet palette when you can make one yourself for like a fiver. Um, basically, kitchen tissue, parchment paper, and a plastic tub of some sort. There is a video on my channel. Uh, if you go into my playlists, there is a video explaining how to make a wet palette in the how-to playlist. Um, go and find that and have a look at that, and that will tell you everything you need to know about uh, making a wet palette. For mere pences, perhaps. Oh! I don't believe it. I don't believe it. My Winsor & Newton Series 7 has been like that in the glass because the plastic tubes come off. Oh! Tragedy! Tragedy! No! This is not good. This is not good. State of affairs. Look at that. It's kinked it a bit. I'm going to have to do some remedial work on that and fix it, I think. Oh, fudge. It's been in the glass, but its plastic tube must have come off. I think I might just be able to save it, but its plastic tube had come off and it had been sat down. Oh, that's a right pain in the bum. I'll have to fix that later. I'll put that there and remember to fix it later. <sighs> right. So I need to find myself a good brush. Do do do. Let's find a good brush to paint with. This bit that's a layer. I want to layer. I want a base brush. There we go. That should be a nice base brush. So I'm gonna start with the the Escape Light Dinge, which is a layer paint. So it's a bit more transparent than a base paint. So it may take a couple of coats just to uh, get it going. So I'm gonna put my helmet of seeing on so I can make sure I can see everything. I shall have a look at the chat in a moment when I've done this to see what you're all having for your dinner. Where can I put the pallet that's out of the way? There we go. So now they have given us on the head of these Funko Pops, they have given us this kind of ribbed tubing. Now, when you paint your Primaris Marines, they tend to have like it's tend to be painted as a silver colour because it's smooth, but on this it's a ribbed colour. So I was like, what am I supposed to do with that? I can't paint it metallic colour because like ribbed tubing is generally rubber or something, so it's gonna look stupid if I paint it metallic. But luckily, the concept art I've got for the Angry Marine uh, is a dark grey colour. So I think I can get away with this. So it's going to take more than one coat. I can see, you might not see on camera, but I can see this paint is quite transparent. So it's going to take more than one coat to get good coverage. 
Uh, I'm not adding any water to it. I'm just using the water that comes through the wet palette, which is just enough to sort of dilute it or thin it and make it flow nicely. But it is still quite transparent even then. So I wouldn't want to thin it any more than that because that would just mean I've got to do more coats. <laughs> so how is everybody? I hope you're all well. Uh, if you haven't been watching my channel this week, if you've not had a chance, I have been doing some streams during the week and I will be doing more in the coming weeks as I am working on um, George's Master Grade Cesarbi. It's a Patreon reward build. Uh, I'm doing the Shanghai Dragons livery colours. Shanghai Dragons style. Uh, sorry, Shanghai Dragons themed Borderlands style master grade Cesarbi in a little diorama uh, and it's a reward bill for George because he's a Shanghai Dragons fan I can't remember why we agreed on the Borderlands scheme but we did uh, and it's a, it's a Patreon exclusive video build series but I'm doing the live streams because I'm doing like we've done on this Sunday stream we've done the dry brush post shading I've been doing that on the armour and I've got lots and lots of that to come so while I'm doing that I'm doing that as a live stream so that everybody can watch that so I've got my helmet of seeing on, but it's actually just making things worse, to be honest. So I might just take it off. My eyesight is such that it's normally I'd leave my helmet of seeing because I'm close up, but because I'm painting this and it's big, I don't need to be quite as close. But then I haven't got my helmet of seeing on, so <clears throat> I can see, but just not quite. It's quite frustrating. Quite frustrating. So, yes, yeah, so I've been doing that all this week. Uh, I did two or three streams as and when I could. There will be more to come because I say there is a lot of the uh, dry brushing to do and I've got I'll do the same when I do things like the decals and stuff where it's just stuff that I can turn my brain off and not be thinking like I couldn't do this oh, I can do it. I'm doing this now but on George's Patreon build I wouldn't want to be distracted while I'm doing you know fiddly painting and stuff this is just a fun build so I don't mind if I make a few goofs on this thing but for George's thing, where it's the delicate stuff, I want to be focused on it, so that's where the painting video comes in. But for things like decals and where it's just me sat there for hours and hours and hours doing stuff that I don't need to particularly think about too much, that's where uh, that's where the streaming comes. And it just means that you guys get some content if you're not patrons, you get some content as well. Because this is the downside I was saying on the other stream the other day is this is the downside of me doing Patreon exclusive builds is that I can only really do one build at once or maybe two if I manage to clear the desk off each time. It's not ideal. Um, but, you know, if I've got two big builds going on, I can't really... It's kind of hard to do. I'm having to move stuff around all over the place. So it does mean sometimes that while I've got a Patreon exclusive build on the go, especially something big and complex like the, uh, like the Cesarbe, I can't really, I don't really have the time or the space to do a second build for everybody else. Uh, right, so on this now we've got to do the undersuit, the rubbery bits. Uh, back of the knees and the elbows. I have gone ahead and in advance I painted under the, the crotch area between the leg and the, the crotch piece. Just purely because it's hard to get to and I needed to be able to see what I was doing. So I've done that in advance anyway. So this is going to be the elbows, the back of the knees. Uh, there's no actual tubing anywhere. I've got the butt, so I need to do that. So I need to get myself a good little brush. Let's do what's this one? This is a small layer brush that might do exactly perfectly so nicely. I shall have a look at the chat in a moment. Okay, so we're going to get some of this going. Now here I will, I think, need my helmet of seeing so I can see. Do, 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 do. Now you might not see what's going on here because there's everything in the way, but I can see, and that's all that actually matters right now, is that I can see what's going on. I'm just trying to get these bits painted grey without getting any paint on the yellow because I don't want to have to repaint any of the armour because that would be a bad thing. So I know you might not be able to see any of this. Trust me, it's all good stuff. Mm -hmm. You can't see any of that. I, in fact, I can't even see any of that. I just don't want to take them off the base just yet, though, because it's a pain putting them back on again. Just carefully painting these little bits of the inner, the inner suit. Now there is going to be a, a wash of normal oil over these grey parts, 
So it's not the end of the world if the edges aren't quite perfect or if there's a little bit of patchiness to it. Because the, the null oil shade later on will actually hide all the sins. I've said it a million times before. When you're painting your base colours, you want to be as neat and clinical as possible. But it's not the end of the world if you get an edge that's a little bit wibbly wobbly perhaps. Because shades will hide a lot of that. If you have an edge and two different colours, it will kind of blend them together forgive your sins a little bit so don't bust a gut trying to get the most perfectest edge ever if you're doing a shade later on i mean if you you know you should always strive for quality but it's just not the end. don't go back and forth tidying up your work as you go like obsessing over it because you can sit there trying to get an edge perfectly straight but the irony is once you put the shade on you'll suddenly realize no one can see that edge anyway so there you go and hopefully you can see the back of the knees a little bit. Let's just get a bit more paint on there. Yes, if you if you're doing that the black undersuit, I wouldn't always I wouldn't really recommend ever painting it black to start with anyway. Like I said, just because if you paint it black, you can't shade down from there. You can do highlights. It's a bit more of a pain, but you can't do any low lights. And you're having to then build the low lights by painting in the highlights, if you understand what I mean. You paint it black the only way you can go is lighter and you have to build that up but at least with the if you do a gray color you can it's actually easier you can paint it a dark gray color add your wash or shade to darken it and that might be enough because the, the the original sort of gray color might be dark enough or light enough to actually be its own highlight <clears throat> Now I can't quite get my brush in the little gap there between the, the upper and lower leg armour. But that's not a problem because I'm going to get the wash in there, the black null oil. Can I get it? I don't want to get paint on the on the yellow army, you see, I don't want to risk it. Get a little bit in there. But I'm going to be able to get the, the shade in there, so it's fine. I'm not too worried if I can't quite get paint all the way up down that gap. Because I don't want to get it on the armour. And the shade will go in there and again it will hide. It will darken it down and hide it. So sometimes let the shade do the work for you. And if you're looking at doing any kind of rubbery effects, like the rubber tubes on the mask on the face, or this undersuit, which kind of looks like it's got kind of rubbery effect to it, null oil is a wonderful way of doing that anyway. Different to like black inks, it's just the way it dries, the, the, the sort of texture it has when it dries, the feel of it is just certainly very different to just black it has a kind of it's hard to explain it doesn't just look like black it has a kind of rubbery effect to it so it looks like a rubber undersuit uh, okay so same again with there i can't quite get around the back of the around the side of the legs but the, the normal oil wash will kind of hide all those sins so we'll just try and run it down there a little bit I will say, Cy Reynolds, who's done one of these, he actually managed to discombobulate it all. He took the arms and things off, uh, which made it a lot easier to paint. But he did that by cutting and sewing. So, yeah, I didn't do that. I got the head off, which was fairly easy and non-destructive. Uh, if you're doing one of these and you want to know how to get the head off, it's very simple. I'll tell you in a second when I'm doing this fiddly bit round under here. These are, of course, little vinyl figures, so uh, they don't quite behave the same way as normal plastics that you're used to. So what you can do, if you want to take the head off, uh, the head has basically got a hole at the bottom of it, like that. Uh, and on the neck here, there's normally like a bulb on the end. There's a post with a blob on the end. And the blob goes in and stops the head coming off. Uh, what you need to do is you need to get the head off and then remove that. If you want to be able to take the head on and off, is remove that bulb so you can get the head back on again you can't just pull it off though because the, the plastic is too flexible it's too pliable it doesn't want to come off so what you actually have to do is get yourself uh, a little mixing jug or something uh, boil the kettle fill the jug full of boiling water from the kettle and then dunk this fellow in it just in the water for like two or three minutes you'll get really hot what you can do then is carefully um, take him out and just gently pull the head off 
if you pardon the expression, uh, what you'll find is the plastic around this hole will be very flexible and will come off away from the pole, the, the post here. You can get it off then. What I then needed to do was just scrape away with a knife, hack away that lump so it's just a spike now. And what it means is I can put his head back on whenever I want and it's a nice tight fit. When you do it, you might find this lower plate on the head comes out completely. Don't panic, let it dry, let it go. When it, as it cools down, it'll go hard again. Just get some super glue, plonk it back in and then you can take put the head on and off as you choose then. So if it does come off, you can just glue it back on. You can't use like polystyrene cement or anything like that because this isn't polystyrene. You have to use either epoxy cement or just super glue will be absolutely fine. Right, we've got the elbows to do. Spanish archer, elbow. Old joke, old joke. Uh, so we've got the elbow, all the inner elbows to do, which we did find out what they were called last week and I've already forgotten. I did ask you all, what's the inside of the, it's the something ossifery, os, ossipathy, opathicity. I don't remember. Foss, fossu, fossula, fossus, fossus, fissus. I don't know. I'm just making up noises now. Whatever word it was, I'm sure it's a completely cromulent word. But okay, we'll get these bits done, and I shall have a look at the chat and see what you're all talking about. I need to find out what you're all having for your dinner or had for your dinner. I have to say, after coming off the back of working on the Cesarbi all week, which is a beautiful, fun build, but it's very, it's very think intensive. You have to do a lot of big thinks when you're working on the Cesarbi, because you've got to keep in mind, you know, what's going where, what order of painting can be, all that kind of stuff. To go from something like that that demands a lot of attention and patience and skin, and, you know, uh, whatever focus to something like this which is pre-made you're just painting it it's a wonderful little palette cleanser so i always recommend to people if you're working on something and it is a big complicated paint job a complicated build and it's got lots of thinking involved and don't just sit there and work on that constantly because you will get a little bit burnt out sometimes and even if you're not it's just nice to have a break every now and then so do have on standby if you're doing a big complicated model and it could be that you know it's the paint it's paint stage so it could be a big complicated paint job or it could be that you're doing lots of say modification to it so it might be complicated scratch building things and all that kind of stuff or it might just be it's a very complicated build whatever it is it pays to have something on standby just off to one side that at a moment's notice if you start to get a little bit burnt out on the big job you can just go, you know what, I'm just going to spend a day or two just working on this other thing, just, just for fun. I'll, I'll go and work on that for a bit. And something simple like, you know, like this, where you can just pick up a paintbrush and have some fun with it. Or, uh, you know, sort of like Lego or just something that's not going to tax your brain. If you've been doing a, a, a build that's lots of thinking, it's nice to break away from that just every now and then. And just do a palette cleanse. Always nice. Now, I can't get the brush in there to do this bit of armour. Or can I? Can I? I think I can actually. I'm talking rubbish. I can get that brush in there. Just knowing the right angle. The right angle? The right angle? Is it safe? Is it safe? Okay, so there we go. That's the elbows done. Or the inner arms. Uh, not quite sure what the conversation is but dad posts up the link for goblin gaming thank you very much dad uh for the goblin gaming yes goblin gaming they support this stream uh they're my very good friends they do offer you 20 percent off all games workshop products 20 percent off all malifo and 20 percent off all uh conflict 47 if you're not sure what conflict 47 is if you don't know it's awesome it's like it's alternative history earth world war ii so it's like world war ii but you know, it's it's not quite World War II. It's, there's, there's a whole different story that's to do with like some sort of aliens and uh, yeah, special resources, and it's it's kind of it's, it's, anyway. It's hard to explain, but it's kind of like alternative history Earth with World War Two vehicles that have like a Sherman with a plasma cannon on it. It looks mint. But it's twenty percent off all of those ranges. So if you want to save yourself some cash -alons, there is a link in the description below all my videos. Uh, it's my affiliate link to Goblin Gaming, and what that means is. 
if you just go to Goblin Gaming, you'll save yourself 20% on those ranges, and you'll save yourself massively on other things as well. Everything's discounted. Uh, but if you want to help out this channel, if you use the link that's in the description below all my videos, uh, not only will you make those huge savings, you will also help support this channel because it's an affiliate link. Every time you order through that link, I make a little tiny bit of uh, commission on that, a little bit of income. So it's massively appreciated. If you like my stuff, if you want to help support this channel, but perhaps you don't want to become a patron, you can just do things like use that link for Goblin Gaming. Uh, you know, shop at eModels if you've got traditional gaming needs, because they're my sponsors. Uh, you know, use my Amazon store if you need to pick up some shizzle from Amazon, model making shizzle from there. All the links are in the description for all my videos, so go and have a look. It's greatly appreciated. It really helps out, helps me out in this channel because this is what I do for a living. So I depend on my patrons and my other forms of income to keep this channel bubbling over like a nice casserole, like a nice stew. I'm trying to get this bit under here painted without getting my head on camera and without getting paint on the yellow bit. I thought I'd give him like a black, it's not actually in the diagram, in the artwork, but I'll give him a black grip on his weapon, because it's like, I like to think it's like a pump action, even though it's not a shotgun. Because it's Warhammer, nothing makes sense in Warhammer. Nothing actually makes any sense at all. Uh, I'll give that a second to dry. Do I need to do a second coat on these puppies? Doobie 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 When you're doing more than one coat, with acrylics, water-based acrylics, if it is, say, a layer paint or a quite a thin, transparent colour. Do keep in mind that once you've done a, the first base coat and you've got, like, this patchy finish here and you want to go in and do the second coat just to tidy it up, you can actually thin the paint a little more. Because, obviously, when you're working with brush painting paints, the trick is to always make sure you've got the smoothest paint finish possible. And if you're brush painting, then, obviously, you're at risk of getting more brush strokes and things like that. I need to put some more paint on the wet palette because it is running out. Um, yes, yeah, so the whole trick is to get as smooth a finish as possible, which is why you always thin your paints a little bit <coughs> or why I use a wet palette. Uh, but one little handy trick is if you're doing something that requires more than one coat, like this kind of paint where you put on one coat and it's a bit transparent, so you need to go back and do a second coat, uh, do, the, do the second coat, you can do it a little bit thinner because at that point, you're not having to cover as much as the first coat. You're just kind of almost filling in the gaps where there's a little light patch where the first coat was a bit thin on a raised area. You're just covering that up. So you can afford to go a little bit thinner with your paint. And because you've gone a little bit thinner, of course, you're helping reduce the chance that you're going to get any brush marks. So always go a little bit thinner on your second coat. Sometimes you'll need to do more than two coats as well. So it just pays to... Especially with yellows and things, it just pays to go a bit thinner than you need to. Because it's always better to do like three thin coats than one big fat coat and have brush marks everywhere. Do -do 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 with normal paints, obviously different kind of paints have different processes. Like contrast paints, of course, is a whole different story. Uh, lacquers and enamels are completely different. So this is just for a water-based acrylic paint, where you want to you want to get the surface as smooth as possible. Okay, so I'm not too fussed if there's like a little edge here and there where there's a little bit of something showing through. It's a bit thin because I know the wash, the shade that's going to go on, is going to go into all those little gaps. So I don't need it to be a hundred percent. If I was just painting this grey and that was the colour, I want it to be nice and neat and smooth. But because it's going to be washed over and darkened a lot, <clears throat> I don't mind if it's a little tiny bit patchy. So whereas this might benefit from a third coat, I'm not going to do a third coat. I don't mind. It'll be fine with two. But only because I know I'm doing a normal wash over this. And it might be quite a heavy wash, so... Because the null oil wash won't just be there to go into the recesses and make it look dark. It's also there to darken the whole thing and make it look more like rubber. Rubber, you say? Rubber? I like a nice bit of rubber. Yeah. You were. I don't know where that came from. Mm -mm -mm. 
I want to get back into the chat so I can see what you're all having for your dinner and what you've had. I don't know what we're having yet. I have no idea what we're having. Yesterday we had delight. I made a delightful salad. I was in quite a light food mood. So I made a delightful salad yesterday. That's simple. We I may I had some lettuce, like crispy, crunchy, lettucey, rockety things. Not all rocket, because too much rocket is nasty, but lots of crunchy lettucey things. I had a big bag of spinach. So we had some just raw spinach leaves in that. I like raw spinach, it's nice. Just literally the leaves. Uh, we had, uh, I put in a load of potato salad. Or uh, coleslaw for Mama Fox, because she's not so keen on the potato salad. Uh, chopped up some celery, so that was nice, into little tiny pieces, that was mixed in. Chopped up some yellow and red peppers, very nice. I'm not too keen on, I like green peppers, but they're not quite as sweet tasting as the red peppers. So in a salad, I like the red and yellow peppers. So put some of those in. Uh, and what else did we have in there? Chopped up some chestnut mushrooms as well into thin slices. They were sprinkled into the salad. Uh, that was nice. And then and then on top of that was some sweet chilli sauce. That was very nice. And we had some uh, salad cream and some sweet chilli sauce mixed into that. And then I got one of them bendy sausages, the Mattersons bendy sausages. Got two of those. Stick them under the grill for like a couple of minutes just to crisp them, crisp them around the edges. <clears throat> chop them up into slices little tiny slices and that goes on the top and it was delish and it was absolutely fantastic it was really really nice it tasted fantastic and ever since then last night i've had nothing but the most intense mushroom burps of all the really flavorful things in that dish the mushrooms are the only ones i can taste when i burp it's like what what how is that even possible raw mushrooms really nice i like raw mushrooms most tasty Do, 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 do. Get a quick little dash of a second coat on these. Not too much. I don't need to put a lot of a second coat. There's just a very quick coverage coat on here just to make sure there's no egregious light patches. I think they're pretty good though because they've had two coats already. Uh, a bit of butt work needs to go on here. There we go. Always make your butt look as good as possible. Uh, and then a bit on this here. This here part of the riflings. Wow, and I can suddenly see all the bits on the hand grip that I hadn't painted. Wow. Awesome sauce. Now, the reason I'm being so careful is because, of course, we have done all that dry brushing work on the yellow. If it was just a flat yellow base coat, then I could just not be worried too much and, and touch it all in and fix it later. But because we are doing, we've done all that brush, that dry brushing first. Which we have to, because there's no way you could do all that dry brushing carelessly with all the other bits painted. Because you'd just be going backwards and forwards, constantly touching in each colour forever, and it'd be a pain in the bum. So sometimes you just have to draw a line and make that decision. And the decision was, yes, we'll do the we'll do the yellow, get that all dry brushed in, and everything else can go on top. You do have to therefore be a bit more careful. Show a bit of caution. But it's worth it because the results will come good. Trust me on that. All right, there we go. Uh, the rest of that little grip on the gun, you can't actually really see it. I can, oh, I can see around the back actually. Whoa! Spilled coffee on it. This is the tricky bit. I've got to get to this grip around the back, and it's quite tricky to get to. But I think I can just about get away with it. Just about. Maybe. It was a bit thin. Let's try that again. A little raised lip, which is kind of handy, so I can drag the brush along. And then for the flat bit, I can go down like that and just hope that I don't get any of the grey paint on the chest. Again, a lot of this will be evened out when I put the shade on it. Anything that's a little bit patchy will suddenly just look dark, so it's all gravy. Get the other side there, there we go. Beautiful. Lovely. I suddenly remember that the actual hand grip bit, there's a backside to it on the other side of the gun. It's like, oh, I forgot about that. Oh. So 
we go. It's just about done. Just about neat. <coughs> <coughs> so I, I saw somebody in the chat say, it's a snake. I guess that's because somebody else said badger, badger, mushroom. Oh, yes, Andy McLeese says badger, 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 badger. Mushroom, mushroom. Mush, badger, 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 badger. African snake. Right, so that's those grey bits done. Base coat. Uh, do I need to do anything else dark grey before I... I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that's all the dark grey I need to worry about. Cool. Nothing else on the helmetings? No? Good. Right. So get that down there. Uh, have a quick look at chat before I do the next colour. Doodle -doo 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 -doo. Let's see what you're doing in chat because you did. I did ask you what you're having for your dinners and stuff. Let's have a look. Wow, it's just there's lots of chat I've missed. There we go. Uh, Gus Vickers says one. I'll go through these quickly because I don't want to be here for forty-five minutes. One forty-eight sea fury meat and tatty pie chips and mushy peas. All that food sounds fantastic. Meat and tatty pie, mushy peas. You're a you're a northern lad and you know it. Um, Jamie Bone says fox for all the trimmings are honey glazed roast potatoes, oh, roast parsnips, oh, fresh garden vegetables, oh, sage onion stuffing, oh, three giant Yorkshire pudding, oh, and then bench. I don't care now. <laughs> I'm just thinking about giant Yorkshire puddings. Yeah, bench is 148th Sea Fury. There you go. Same as Gaz because Jamie and Gaz may be making the same kit. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Nim has got on her bench an MG camphor, belly shepherd's pie for lunch and for dinner, having a grilled cheese sandwich with a bowl of turkey chilli. Oh, wow. Uh, Mordraka says, uh, bench, uh, sorry, belly, fish, chicken snags. Snags is sausages, isn't it, I think? Was it sandwiches? Might be some sausages, I think. Uh, chips and eggs. I didn't realise you're Australian. Having some snags, bro. Bench, CGI cameras for model mapping. You might need to explain that. CGI cameras for model mapping. We want more information on that. Uh, Lynn Dipple says, Belly Golden Graham's Cereal Bench. Hang on, I'll rephrase that. Golden Graham's Cereal in the belly. Uh, bench is still at Lowe's Home Improvement Store. She's not finished setting up a workspace yet. Uh, average Modeler. Welcome on Average Modeler. Is a 1600 scale USS Enterprise NYC 1701. NYC? I think you mean NCC. <laughs> it's, the, it's the New York. It's the New York, New Jersey. Enterprise. Hey, it's the Enterprise. Uh, not sure what the little lady is fixing for supper. Mm. Uh, David Butch, that model. Sacrilege on the bench. The Ravel 121th Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. Typical rat. That'll be a box scale then for Ravel. Uh, roast chicken dinner soon to be in the belly. Good man. Eric Graham. Coffee in the belly. Space Marines. Daka Jets and Marauder Destroyers on the bench. Uh, that is cute. Pikachu, says Lynn. I think about the um, Angry Marine. Yeah, not when I've written the words that go on the pauldron. It won't be cute. Will no longer be family friendly. I was gonna, I was, I was painting this, and I was thought to myself, I should take it to my local warm store. I'm going to put it in the window just so they've got something. I thought, no, maybe not actually, because not with the words I'm going to write on it. Uh, Reese uh, RJC model says, I'm filming my 135th scale salad in armored car, belly chocolate biscuits and coffee. Good man. Andy McLeese is uh, shouting, burn the heretic to, to uh, da uh, Dave, who's painting Ravel. Skullfish says, I feel the need for a spicy meat feast pizza from the nice gentleman around the corner. Mobius Battlestar Pegasus on the bench. Ah, the fat one. The fat uh, Battlestar. The fatal star. You see, it's fat. Moving on. Uh, Jordan Capuano says, oh, that roast chicken sounds nice. I assume that's to Jamie. I'm on beef, which means I'm in the kitchen cooking and playing the stream really loud to block out the kids from films in the other room. Yeah, just keep it loud. Dude. I can smell the beef from here. Uh, Edwin Leonard, resin 3D printing a bunch of crap to practice and going to make pork fried rice. Ooh. Interzone 88, uh, g'day Interzone, is working on Warcry barricades. You didn't say what's in your belly though, or what will be in your belly. We expect the update on that second half. Uh, Jamie Bone says to Jordan that the chicken has herbs on to bring out the taste. Oh yeah. Andy McLeese says, midnight black, black and dark blue, or ash black, dust dark grey, yeah. Uh, is that because we were talking about painting black things, I assume? I don't know. Uh, Wayne Haywood says, Belly is crab stick and sweet chilli hummus sarnies. I like the sound of that. And a cream horn. Make your own jokes. I like a nice cream horn. <laughs> she said. On the bench, I'm painting up some acrylic tokens for the X-Wing and miniatures game. Uh, Jamie Burns says, don't use a wet palette. Just take the paint out of the pot or jar. <laughs> You're saying that just to make me go funky now, aren't you? Um, let's have a look. 
Uh, Nim says, odd question, if you put yourself on a strict backlog only building run and your kit you pre-order comes in, does it count as buying a new kit or is it still part? Just just do it. You're overthinking it. Just just buy it. If, it's like an if-than statement. Uh, if there is a kit available you want and you have a backlog, ignore the bit about the backlog and just go, if there's a kit available you want, then buy it. Uh, let's have a look. Do, 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 do. People just don't mind they count the stash as kits in my possession. A pre-order arriving will be a new kit. Uh, Beyond Hope asks, could you use tire black? It's not a complete black and would replicate the rubberized tube color pretty effectively. You could do. Uh, you mean, is that Vallejo, I think, is tire black, isn't it? Yeah, ba it basically, just as long as it's not a black. Uh, I mean, the Tamiya equivalent is rubber black, but you don't want to brush paint with Tamiya. But if you were doing, say, airbrushing, rubber black is a very dark, but almost, but not quite black. Maybe it's a bit... Actually, no, German grey will be a better Tamiya colour. Um, tire black is a Vallejo, if I remember right. It's either model or game. I think it's a model colour. Uh, that would be fine, yeah. It's just like a dark grey colour that's not black, basically. Because if you do black, you can't go anywhere from that. And when we do the wash on this, you probably won't even see it that much anyway. But you'll get the idea. <laughs> Uh, Jordan apparently has chocolate cake, a chocolate gato, and a strawberry cake too. <gasps> and everybody's now like, right, we're off around to Jordan. See you later, Fox. Cheers, Dad. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I need to come clean with you all this week. I bought some Citadel contrast paint. There's nothing wrong with that. I've, I like Citadel contrast paints. Uh, I've used them on my Sazabi. I'm using them on my Sazabi. Uh, let me show you, for example. My Pokemans, let me show you them. Can I find a bit? There we go. There's a, a, a Sazabi piece. That's contrast paints. It's painted um, Vallejo dark grey colour of some sort. Oh, uh, there's a nice dark grey colour, Vallejo colour. Uh, you might like to try. It's called French Mirage Blue, but it's basically dark grey. French Mirage Blue. Uh, it is Vallejo model colour 70900. I used French Mirage Blue, which is grey, and I used uh, French uh, Grey, which is blue, which is Steel Grey, which is blue. Um, the grey is that Vallejo colour. Everything else, apart from, oh, the yellow is Avalanche Sunset. Everything else on here is a contrast paint. Those were all Wolf Grey and, uh, what was it, Grey, uh, grey Seer Primer, and then it was Wolf, Space Wolves Grey, or the other one, but I can't remember. Um... Space Wolves Grey and Griff Charger Grey to get these grey colours. But I'm going for a watercolory look, so I want patchy finish on them anyway. So yeah, I like them. I like them. They've got their uses. They're not they're not they're not perfect for like flat things like that, but I want that patchy effect. They're good for organic things like figures and stuff. For like vehicles and stuff, maybe not so much because they do dry kind of patchy, like water watercolours. Uh Jamie's thinking about putting Jar Jar's face on top of Victoria Sponge. Oh, that'll make it totally inedible. Eric Graham says something and retracts it, but I don't know what. Been fiddling with the contrast paints and they do make life easier. Yeah, they give a different effect. Contrast paints to me, people go, oh, I don't want to use those. I think just sitting there going, yeah, they're rubbish then, is, is a bad thing. Because I don't think there's anything wrong with any particular like paint or modelling product. Unless it's Vallejo Primer, in which case you'd burn it. Uh, it's how you use it. I see the contrast paints as being useful to create watercolour effects, watercolour look. If I want my figure to look like it's it's been painted with watercolours, for example, because you might want it, uh, that will be quite useful because it has that kind of look to it. Uh, it's also good for like glazing effects and stuff like that as well, because they are basically just glazes. But um, that's why I'm using on the Cesar, because it's going to have that Borderlands look. And the Borderlands look is basically watercolour with ink outlines. That's the Borderlands look. If you break it down to its brass tack comic book style, it's watercolour colouring with, with ink outlines. It's comic book style. So I quite like them. Uh, Jordan says to Jamie, you can't just add Jar Jar to a cake. It needs to be a Wookiee or an Ewok. Uh, Beyond Hope says he's got two ethermatic blue to shave my space marines and Gilliman Flesh as I still cannot get a good skin. Uh, Glimmer Flesh is quite good, actually. It's it's good. There are uses. They're great for beginners, and they do have their uses to the hardcore pros as well. Don't write them off. Some people just say, oh, it's rubbish paint, that. No, don't write them off. There's uses for them. Uh, when was the last time you shaved a Wookiee? Asked Beyond Hope to Andy McLeish. I'm walking away from that conversation. <laughs> uh, Jordan says, I can imagine Fox now. Let's see what we're talking about. Cake and shaving Wookiees. Yes. 
Uh, right, I'll scoot forward a bit because I don't want to get too stuck up on doing the chat. Uh, He's not on about mushrooms again. That's all we got while playing Destiny last night. Yeah, I've still got the mushroom burps. Um, no, no. So all of a sudden I have a hankering for strawberries and bananas said somebody but then the chat jumped uh, Chris I think Jamie's, Jamie's saying to Chris don't worry if you can't do a stream tonight yeah Chris if you've got a banging headache because Chris normally does a stream at 8 o'clock on a Sunday night after mine uh, but if you've got a, a thrumpy head uh, I don't know what the conversation was, but honestly, I love how people miss the semi-joke of my username. Just Django means you need to know I'm only called Django. No fancy stuff. But then we all call him Just Django. <laughs> and, uh, Django it is from now on. And then I'll forget that within minutes. Uh, let's have a look. What's the best stuff to strip Games Workshop paints? Asks Snowman. Andy McLeish says acetone. Acetone will strip paint off anything and it will strip any paint. But it may also dissolve your plastic if it's a Bandai kit, for example. So do be careful with acetone. Plus it smells. It's dead strong. Um, but it's cheap to get. Uh, but acetone is a good stripper, but it can damage some plastics. Um, more Dracker and Dad say Dettol. Snowman says any type, and it's like, yes, the brown Dettol. If you're going to use Dettol, if you're in the UK and you want to use Dettol, it's that stuff, the brown stuff. It's just an antiseptic stuff. Um, but it works on pretty much any plastic or whatever substrate you've got. It takes off. It can take off lacquer paints. It can take off uh, enamel paints. It'll quite happily take off most acrylics. Uh, it doesn't. It, it, it does have a strong smell. But to me, as a, as a guy that grew up in the 1970s as a kid, most of us grew up as a kid, I know, but because I was a kid in the 70s, it makes me think of school corridors and falling over and grazing your knee, and then your mum kind of rubs a bit of cotton wool with some Dettol on it to antiseptic your knee. So to me, it's a pleasing smell. It's not as offensive as, say, thinners or paint strippers. Uh, and once you've, once you've stripped all the paint off, it won't damage the plastics. It won't even damage... Uh, I've used it on some Bandai plastics, and it doesn't actually damage them. Um, but... Uh, brain, brain, brain. Yes, it, it doesn't smell too bad. And once you've finished and stripped all the, pla all the paint off, you get all the plastic out, you can pour the stuff back in the bottle and keep reusing it, because it doesn't break down. The only thing with Dettol is, whatever you do, put your part in, let it sit for a few a few hours maybe or 24 hours for some paints and every now and then just go with the toothbrush an old toothbrush and just scrub the paint most of it will come off eventually all the paint will come off you may have a couple little spots here and there but all the paint will come off and all you do then is make sure you've got all the paint keep dipping it in the Dettol and scrubbing it with the brush do not use water at this point only when you're happy that you've got all the paint off that you're going to get off and it's never going to go in the Dettol again you can then rinse it off under the tap because if you're kind of scrubbing it and you then rinse it off and put it back in the Dettol you're going to make a gloopy mess and that's going to be horrible it's not going to be able it's going to be harder to remove the paint because it does some weird stuff if you do that so keep it in the Dettol rinse it in the Dettol put it in dunk it in shake it around toothbrush it off keep doing that when you finish and there's nothing more to do with it and it's as stripped as it's going to be then you can go and rinse it off in water because you want to get all the Dettol residue off when you go then to prime it and paint it but yeah Dettol's quite good uh fox where did you get that model asks lynn this is it's apparently if you go on the internet if you go onto any gate if you go onto the games workshop website it says uh, in-store exclusive but you can buy it on the games workshop website so you can buy it on games workshops website or any games workshop store any Warhammer store, they've got these for sale. This is, they do various ones, but this is the one that, I'll show you what it looks like when you get it. If I can get it out. When you actually buy it, it's just that. It's, it comes pre-primed. However, the primer is kind of bish, and it does have a massive seam line all around the head, and there'll be some tidy up you need to do all around the joints and stuff to get rid of the big seam line. Now, it's, um, it's, it's um, vinyl, so you're going to have to be a bit more industrious with your sanding i spent ages sanding this and i got rid of all the seam lines most of them apart from one on the head that since i painted it has come back to haunt me so you've got to really be because i couldn't see that seam line when it was primed it was just gone and i've spotted a few on the body that look like they've gone but a bit of work and you'll get rid of the seam line and then you can i reprime mine and just painted it it's the kind of a bit rough around the edges and messy but you can clean them up they're pretty cool i do like them um i, I don't really have much like of funko pops i find them not particularly interesting but uh, I wanted one of these because it just looks like good fun to paint, basically. But yeah, any games, any Warhammer store, Games Workshop store, or even just on the Games Workshop website, they're only like 10, 10 quid uh, UK, so I don't know what in dollars. 
Uh, if you are in the UK, by the way, uh, Dettol is probably about three or four quid a bottle. It's not expensive. However, if you're doing, if it's a Bandai model and you want to be super, super, super safe, uh, I also, if you're in the UK, I use Oven Pride Oven Cleaner to take uh, to take the mechy metallic plating off uh, Bandai plastics, and it's never damaged the plastic. So another, if it's a Bandai kit. You might want to maybe get some oven pride oven cleaner, but that stuff's toxic. And if you drip it on the carpet, it will burn a hole in the carpet, and it did. So I don't recommend it. Uh, just dozing off, Fox says my name. Damn it! <laughs> so Lynn says, turn off the show. Uh, do, 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 do. Right. So I think we're up to date on the chat. There are other things you can use to strip paint. Some people swear by brake fluid, like automotive brake fluid. I don't recommend that. Um, for one very well, two very I don't know, two very reasons. But for one, one reason is it's obviously toxic, but then most things are. But secondly, especially in the UK, um, it's actually legal, illegal, completely illegal to pour brake fluid down the drain. You cannot do it. You have to take, you have to save it. If you're using brake fluid, you have to keep it in a container, and you take that container to your local tip, your local refuse um, tip. Um, or your local dump, you cannot pour it down the drain. You have to take it to a proper disposal site where they can dispose of it properly. Like battery acid, you can't pour that down the drain. Um, so it's not worth it. For the sake of getting a bottle of Dettol, which will pretty much take most paint off most surfaces, it, I've seen it take off lacquer paints. I've seen it take off enamel paints. You know, it will take off most paints. It might take 24 hours. You might have to futz around with it a little bit, but it will take most paint off and it won't harm most plastics. And you can just, you don't need, if you want to, you can pour it down the drain. But if you don't, you can put it back in the bottle and keep using it. So there you go. Uh, Ray Eccles, welcome Ray. Ray from Malta. Welcome, welcome Ray. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, doo -doo -doo. It's for when I started Conquest. I painted a couple of ultramarines, but I want to change my paint scheme. Yeah, just get a, just get a plastic tub. Or even just like a plastic cup or just something you can put a lid on or a plastic measuring jug with a plate on the top. Put a lid on it, dunk the figures in, leave them overnight, come back the next day and scrub them. But just don't wet them in water while they've got, while they're going to go back in the Dettol. Just rinse them off at the very end. I've, I've stripped loads of my figures. I've, I've painted my um, Tempest to silence twice now. And every time I get to that, I'm like, yeah, they're getting stripped. <laughs> they're getting stripped. Ah, Andy McLeese says, right, time I saddle my ass off home. Blah. Okay, well, thanks for coming in, Andy. I'll still be here at six o'clock, so if you get home before six, do come and join us back again. Uh, um, that, By the way, Snowman, I will have to do that to my um, Conquest things. What I'm going to do with Warhammer Conquest, because it's piling up... In, um, my hope was that I could build them all in advance and then get around to the painting later in the year. I need to do this as I'll be. I need to do the Millennium Falcon first. I was originally filming... I'd film how it's done in the magazine. And then for some things, I'd do a how to paint it properly and not like in the magazine. I've changed that now because there isn't going to be time. What I'm just going to do is just paint them all properly. So I'm not going to show you how to paint them like in the magazine from now on. I'm just going to be like, here's how to forget the magazine because that's bish. Here's how to paint it properly. So all the ones I've painted so far, I will need to strip back. Right. So we want to do the white bits now. We've got a white bit on the chest there and we've got some white bits on the eyes. So you can't just paint white. You really can't just... Oh, drop my iPad. You cannot just paint... Hang on. Go away. You can't just paint white. I mean, you you can do, but it'll take you a billion coats. White is the worst colour in the world to paint with. I don't recommend it. So what I'm actually going to do is find the right colour. Is That's not the right colour. Hang on. Hang on. Paint scenario. Where's me... Where's, where's my paint? There it is. I think that's it. There we go. If you want to paint, if you're using Citadel paints, if you want to paint white, what you need to do is start off with a with a base colour that's light enough to not affect the white on top of it. Because white is very transparent. If, if I painted white on here, it would look pale yellow. Even with three or four coats, it would take a lot of coats to get it to look white. So the trick is to start off with a, an opaque base coat that's not too dark. So I'm going to use Celestra Grey. It's, it's an old trick. Use Celestra Grey. It's a nice base coat you can do one maybe two coats of this and it's just like a nice gray color and then when you paint the white on top it's going to look like white it's not going to be not going to have to do 58 different coats to get coverage white paint is a nightmare for coverage that's why it's a nightmare so i'm going to put that brush there and that brush there i'm just going to quickly go and change my water so give me use my bigger paint cup actually give me two seconds while i go and change my water because it's covered in the ming hang on There 
we go. I'll go for my bigger water cup because that one's too small, really. Uh, I'm going to get myself some Celestra Grey. I wasn't going for a wee dad. You'd know if I was going for a wee because I would have turned the microphone off and done singing and everything and made lots of noises. I don't need a lot of this. and I've just put far too much on the wet palette, but never mind, eh? It's far too much. Do, do, do. I do recommend, by the way, if you've got an old brush, use that to get paints out of pots and just use it for that and nothing else. Uh, it just saves you using and wearing out a nice brush. Uh, look at the little crud. Oh, I do hate these. I'm not going to do a rant. I'm not going to do a rant about paint pots. The paint pots. I do it every time. I'm going to see if I can get some of this crap out because it's not closing properly. Can I? I'm not used to reverse grip tweezers. I've got to be honest. Let me put those over there because that's clearly rubbish. Let me get some of my. Uh, where's my tweezers? Where's my tweezers? Come on. Out you come. I'm going to stab myself here. I can see it coming. Right, that needs to come out there. That needs to come out there. I've got all that paint that I don't get to use because it's just crusted up and... God damn it, Games Workshop. I love you to bits, but I still want the divorce. I'll have more to, there's more left in there. I need to go and clean that out later on. Yeah, I don't know. So, a bit of Celestra Grey. And all we're going to do for this is we are going to, uh, first of all, put my headset on so I can see. First thing I'm going to do is the Aquila on the chest. Now, I'm not going to be thinning the Celestra Grey. I've got a tiny bit of water on my brush just to make my brush moist so it's not dry. But I'm using the paint as it comes. It is a base paint, but it's quite thin. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to get a nice point on my brush would be a good start. And I'm just going to get it on the wings on the aquila. And I'm not worried if it goes on the skull because that's going to be a different colour later. That's probably a bit too much on my brush there. This brush is not working for me. Hang on. I need something with a better point on it. Let me find a more finer red brush. Uh, shade. That's a artificer. That'll do. I don't want to go too small, but I don't want to swamp or overwhelm the... Uh, the detail on the aquila so we'll just very carefully get this on the aquila first of all and again this is just a base coat to then put the white on top of because colors like white and yellow are nightmare colors just universally whites and yellows for the most part are kind of transparent now Avalon sunset is obviously yeah that's different because that's specifically designed to be a base paint so it's a bit more dense pigment wise but traditionally whites and like Uriel yellow is a horrible color to paint because it's so transparent you will pull your hair out I did a, a space wolves pauldron and I, I hadn't figured out the paints at that point so I wanted to paint it Uriel yellow it took me like a trillion coats just to get some decent coverage and that was over blue. That wasn't even over black. So yeah, colours like white and that you don't ever want to paint them over a strong, bold colours. Like you never want to paint white on top of a black primer or a black base coat. Because you're going to be there for weeks. And you're going to have a thousand layers and it's going to look like a brushy mess. Because any little details are on the surface. You've now removed them all by adding a thousand trillion layers of white. And also white paints are a lot very gritty and gravelly. The Traditionally, they're not smooth. They, they've got a texture to them just by the nature of what has to go in to make a white paint. So, best to just not paint white straight off. Paint something else underneath first. Now, if you do like a brown colour, like a light brown colour, whatever's underneath the white will sort of tint it. So, you can use that to your advantage. Uh, anything else on the body that I need to do first? Uh, no, because that's going to be gold. I'm just going to check the reference material, just to be sure. Uh, one. I'm going to drop my brush. One second, let me have a quick look. On. I'm going to check on here. I'll do it on here so you can see it as well. Uh, ba -do -ba -do -ba -do -do -do. Now we've got the wings on the aquila. Uh, that's the only real white detail on there. Awesome, there we go. Awesome, awesome. Do, 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 do. 
uh, I am going to do on the head. Now this is where it gets tricky now because I need to paint the eyes. Uh, he might stab himself again. Chris says um, he's trying to sleep, but he keeps getting distracted. Uh, but he can't not watch because he might miss something, like I might stab myself. Indeed, again. Thy creator says it's so satisfying pulling the dried paint off. Yes! That is what the Citadel starter brush is only good for, says Mordrak. No, you want a you want a big brush. This is a uh, this is an old medium shade brush. It's just right for getting paint out of the pot. The starter brush is too small. The starter brush is just good for being thrown away. Now I'm going to go in with my small layer brush here. I could use a bit. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a small layer brush just for the edges. Because these are circles. Now there is some relief to the eyes, but they're not, they're still, it's like a soft relief. They're still a bit flumpy around the edges. They're not like massively etched. There's no like sudden solid line. Now I'm not worried too much. Because the plan for the eyes is I'm going to give them a red glow effect. So I don't need them to be 100% circular because the glowing effect will kind of hide some sins anyway. Hopefully, I'm hoping anyway. I've never done that. I've done little red glowing things on a small, on a big scale, which on a small scale, you know, small things. I've painted it works like the tail lights on the um, Ridge Runner. On something this big, I don't know. We'll find out. It's all an adventure. So I'm going to loosely paint them in now. I've, I've thinned the paint down a bit more. I've added a little bit of water, just a tiny amount, for these because I want these to be smooth. I don't want to have a texture on these at all. There's already the texture from the dry brushing, which I'm acutely aware of. So I want to minimise the risk. Now, if you're painting a curved surface, or curved edge like that, the way I've found best to do it is not to, I need to turn that off actually, is not to be pointing the, the bristles down. But actually, remember I was saying the other week about using squishing the brush down, you want to make the benefit, take the benefit of the of the bristles being squished flat and kind of drag it along that way, if you can see. Because that way you can control with your wrist and fingers the actual curve. If you pull it towards yourself like that, you've got to rotate everything. If you do it sideways, by the varying the pressure of the brush on the model, you can control how far out the brush goes. I just find it easier that way. If you try doing it this way, actually trying to paint a circle, you'll get shake and wobble and it'll just look not as good. It's easier to control where you an edge where you're painting to by pressing heavier or lighter on down on the model with the brush than it is to try and accurately have a straight line. I don't know if you'll see really, but it's I'm, I'm pushing the brush down Till the tip of the brush the corner of the brush is where i want it and then i'm moving it i'm anchoring down with this finger and i'm moving it like this i'm not moving my wrist too much and i'm not moving the model i'm just doing this it's merely that angle there it's that little crux there that's what i'm moving so sometimes these are all things you'll learn as you get used to brush painting but sometimes it's best to just not have a bit of thing on the end of the brush that'd be good uh, something changed all the chat disappeared I don't know what that was it just reset itself uh, please tell me if you can no longer see me or hear me I hope you can okay so I am at risk there of getting a bit of texture coming into that paint because I'm using this smaller brush so I'm gonna leave that to dry for a second uh, yeah sometimes <clears throat> sometimes Streamlabs uh, tends to just reset itself especially if it crashed at some point it'll just reboot uh, am I quieter this week? Uh, I don't know. Let me know if I'm too quiet. I can move the microphone a bit. I can turn the volume up a little bit. Hang on. Uh, that way. Which way is which way is up? I've got to get my volume right now. This is where it's all noisy for you guys. There you go. I've turned the volume up a little bit. Is that any better? Am I am I too loud? Too quiet? Do -do 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 -do. Uh, yeah. Streamlabs reboots itself sometimes. Just resets itself because I I know it's going to do it because. Uh, all the chat just stop. Uh, all the um, volume meters just stop doing anything. Jamie Bowen says, got to go now. The roast chicken is ready. I should be back. If not, I'll be back in Chris's stream later if he does one. Thanks for coming in, Jamie. Uh, yeah, maybe see you later on. Or if not, I'll hopefully if Chris is feeling up to it later on, I'll see you in Chris's stream. Enjoy your lovely, lovely chickeny goodness. Jealous. Whatever I have, it won't be a roast chicken dinner. And that will be just sadness. Sadness. Well, that's a big brush. Don't want to use that. 
Do do do. Ninety percent of learning how to paint uh, is not some deep, dark, mystical knowledge that you have to be an elite to learn. It's a bit like airbrushing. It's it's not as complicated complicated as you think. Learning to brush is not any deep, dark, mystic thing. It's purely a big percentage of learning to paint is firstly knowing what brush to use when generally you want to use a brush that's a little bit bigger than you think you need just to avoid any you know excessive brush marks but it's knowing which brush to use uh, and the best way to handle the brush and that's it really it's, it's really down to see, I've, oh, I've got some of the gray on the yellow there but I can tidy that up it's only a tiny bit uh, it's knowing just the best way to handle the brush the best way to orient it like I say some for the most part you're not going to be doing pointy pointy painting but there are situations where you want to okay so that's on there I splodged a bit with the uh, gray on the yellow so I need to do a little tiny bit of you're your yellow now I'm gonna Chris are you watching I'm gonna do this from the pot uh, snowman says need to go wife needs to be by all okay thanks for coming in snowman Chris look at this I'm going from the pot I'm going from the pot because I need a molecule of paint I'm just touching in I've taken most of the paint off on a piece of tissue and I'm just going to touch in a spot like literally there there that's it done so I do take paint from the pot sometimes. Doesn't mean I can't shout at you when you do it. But that really was a molecule the size of a paint chip. I wouldn't take paint from the pot if I was painting paint chips, for example. He says, no dad device either. I've not done any shades yet. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> dad will be growling at me now. Uh, yeah, take care, snowman. I hope uh, nothing, no, you don't have to leave us for a bad reason. Because that will be sadness. Oh, I know, actually. I do need to, uh, where's that yellow gone? Where's my avalanche on? Where's me? Oh, there it is. Uh, I do need to actually do the same thing, exactly the same thing again. Again, from the pot. Like the tiniest dot. It's like, you can't even see it. It's like a molecule of paint. Take some of it off on the tissue. Most of it. And I'm just, there's a little tiny bit of grey on there. I just need to touch that in yeah. just the tiniest touch now that uh, your yellow is slightly transparent but that's great because it's a bit bolder than the yellow that's overall general color so it's transparent it'll show the gray through it and it'll kind of blend in and match so there we go that's that bit uh, next I need to paint the skull on the chest which on the figure is red so you, you know what color it's gonna be dad 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 my fist and red my fist and red my fist and red dad's woken up now i need a tiny amount on my palette literally a, a dot that much doo -doo 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 -doo. just a little bit of paint and the water's gone pink looks like lovely lovely milkshake lovely lovely milkshake uh, i'm gonna get a tiny amount of water just the tiniest amount on the brush because my fist and red is quite a thick paint so you want to the wet palette will thin it enough but it doesn't do any harm to a little bit extra uh, i was listening to fox waffle on there and a crack of thunder scared me half to death Ooh. stuart bremner says good afternoon welcome uh, stuart so we're just going to paint the skull on here now on the on the actual angry marine it is a, the angry face but i'm not about to scrape scratch this bit off with a blade and re-sculpt it especially seeing as I've not been able to get the arms off so this will just be painted red I'm afraid it won't be 100% accurate it's not screen accurate and as with any small detail the trick is to use the width of your brush And pull it towards you all along if you can. 
to get a reasonably nice straight edge. Basically, when you paint it, you want to minimize the amount of work your hand is doing as much as possible. You want to, you know, anchor the piece on a desk, anchor your hand to the model so it can't move. That's going to be too thin. Uh, and then you're just using pulling or dragging, never pushing with the brush. It's too thin. Never push with the brush. Never push unless you're doing stippling specifically. You never push with the brush. Uh, and you're always trying to use the shape of the model that you paint, the, the shape of the surface you're painting to your advantage. There we go. We'll need a second coat on that. But again, it's the same squishy, squashy technique. Get the brush near the edge of the thing you're painting. Get the brush near the edge. Then push it down, the bristles splay out, and you can control, <clears throat> make sure the edge of the bristles is on the edge of the thing you're painting. That's the trick. That is the trick, my friends. Use the whole bristle, the whole brush to your advantage, not just the tip. Okay. Doodle -doo -doodle 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 -doodle. So I can get down there. Now it's not gonna. I've not gone to right to the edge of the piece because it's a very soft edge on this skull. I've gone close to the edge, but there is going to be a shade on that again, so that'll that'll help blend it away, hide the edges. Yeah, if you've got if you've basically got two edges like that, ninety degrees, uh, or you know if you've got an edge like that and you've got a colour here and this is a different colour. If you don't get that paint edge there perfectly straight, your shade will collect in that recess and hide that gap anyway, hide that difference. It'll blend them together. Uh, is it only me that wants to text Fox when he's doing the tiny delicate bits? You would, wouldn't you? It doesn't make me junk there. But one thing I do need to do uh, very quickly, is just move that there, move my iPad, turn off the sounds, because it keeps making pinging sounds. And that's You don't need to hear that. Uh, notifications, turn off the Destiny app, turn off Gmail app, uh, turn off Facebook Messenger. There we go. There we go. I just need to turn them off because they kept pinging in. It's kind of annoying. Mm -mm -mm. <coughs> Bombard model making grow on Facebook. There's nothing now that makes a noise when you do it. Don't, I don't have... I'm one of those people that doesn't have notifications set for things like... Unless I'm on the iPad. On, on, on desktop and mobile, I don't have notifications on for things like Facebook. Because that's just silly. Uh, right, so that's the grey. The Celestra grey is on there for the white bits. So, we don't do any shading yet. What we do now is we go in with the next colour. That was the base colour for the white, remember? So the next colour we're going to do... We're going to do something... But we're not actually going to go straight to white white scar uh, we're going to go for through and gray first of all and again this is just to help the the celestial gray makes everything less bold than the yellow so this is going to not make everything yellow tinted this will lighten it up a lot and then if we need to go even lighter we can then go for uh, the white scar but what i'm going to do is i'm going to use all through and gray for the for the acrylic on the chest because if you paint similar same way <clears throat> same way as if you do everything black you can't then shade it black because you've already done it black <coughs> If you paint something bright white, what are you going to highlight it with? You see? So if you do something like Uthu and Grey, Uthu and Grey is, is, is off-white, it's a little bit darker, and it means then if I want to do edge highlights or highlights on the white thing, I can do a white highlight, and this just looks like... If you just see this on the own, it just looks like white. You won't know. But it's, it just means you've then got the option of doing highlights. Same way you can't you can't shade a black, you can't highlight white. So we'll get a little bit of that. Put that on the wet palettings. Again, we don't need much that's all we need red palettings now i'm going to change my water because as you can see my water's gone pink so i need to change this i don't want pink whites hang on back in a minute there we go so we've got our white white now or rather a clear water even, it's totally the wrong words there. So our water is now clear. So what we need to do is go back in again. 
and do exactly the same, exactly the same. So I'm gonna go in with my artificial layer brush. I keep knocking the camera, sorry. Uh, artificial layer brush for the Aquila because I want control over the paint. I don't wanna be slopping it everywhere. So we're gonna do exactly the same as we've done. We're just gonna go over this Celestial Grey now with this. Now this might cover in one coat. It might require two. We'll see, we'll find out. Let's find out. One coat, there we go. Now the difficulty with this vinyl, this Funko figure, is that the, the texture of the plastic, because it is vinyl, the texture is kind of a little bit gnarly in places of the plastic. So it can sometimes feel like I'm painting with paint straight from the pot and it's going all raggedy edged and slightly gnarly, but it's actually not the paint at all. It is, in fact, the plastic underneath that has a slight texture to it. But it can feel sometimes like I'm painting straight from the pot and getting brush strokes everywhere, but I'm not. It's kind of frustrating in a way. Let's not go there. And we'll do a little bit of this here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I don't know what I'm having for my tea. <clears throat> Might just be McDonald's if we're being lazy. I don't know yet. I appreciate if I do apologize if this is at a funny angle or hard for you to see. There we go. So that's on there. Now around the very edges where the Aquila meets the yellow armor, I've not quite caught every single edge, but that's fine. Because where I've not quite got the very edge, you've got, of course, the Ulthurian grey is the white colour, and under that you've got the Celestial grey, so it acts like a kind of little bit of a shadow, which is fine. But there we go, that's on there. Just need to catch that bit there. We will do a shade on this, but we'll do something a bit different than normal. There we go. Is on there so you can see I mean I know the color and white balance and stuff on this camera is not the best so you can see there it looks it looks how does it look to you it looks kind of white now if you just saw that you think oh it's white it's actually slightly off white but it just means that if I leave it like that we've got somewhere to go we can highlight it further now for the eyes here I'm gonna use a bigger brush I'm gonna use my base brush and I'm actually gonna do it a bit thinner than normal because again, I'd rather do multiple coats than have lots of brush marks. So on here, we're going to go a bit, well, maybe not that thin. It's a bit too thin. I'm not glazing, love. I'm not doing glazes. I want to just get this round and go in a circular motion. That's very thin. I don't, I've kind of bodged that, I think. I don't quite know why that's so thin. So it might require a bit extra coat on here, a bit more than on the Aquilia. And if you do find that when you're brushing, say, a light colour, like white, <coughs> that you, with, even with a thin coat, you get, like, brush marks, don't be tempted to keep working over them at all. Uh, basically, get your thin coat on there as best you can. And if there are some streaky bits or anything like that, don't worry about it. Let the paint fully dry and then go back and go over them later. Because if the thing with acrylic paints is they do dry fairly quickly on the on the the in the air. Uh, and if you brush over an acrylic paint, them drying quite quickly is a bonus because obviously you can, like now, you can come along and do another coat of stuff like within minutes. However, if you're constantly fussing with the paint while it's in the process of drying, then you can start rooking the paint up. You can start pulling it up because it's half dried and you're now running a brush over it and it's like kind of sticky. It's almost like a, like, pulling masking fluid off it starts to mess it up so just get your coat on there and then step away and let it dry don't be tempted and that's one of the reasons that to me a paint is so horrible to brush with because it's basically alcohol based and more of a lacquer you brush the color on and as soon as you're going back over the same bit a few seconds later it can be half dry and when you, it pulls the paint along and you get these little balls of paint coming a little bit starts to ball up because it's 
it's got the surface tension it's sticking it's just a mess so yeah so i'm going to uh, blast this with a hairdryer really quickly one second blasting with a hairdryer there we go there you go ready for the next cap that's the other advantage of acrylics you can do that with a hairdryer and just get that stuff dry for the next coat so there you go so again we're going to go in a little bit thinner than normal but just enough to get me some coverage and we're building this up slowly because the eyes do need to be quite a light color because they're going to have a glaze on them like a, a glaze glow effect so it is important with these that they do get as light as possible now ideally what you do is you'd airbrush all this and I've said that before, this would be an airbrush job, which would look a billion times better. But that wasn't the plan for this. I wanted to just, I wanted to see what this was like if you did brushwork on it. The other one I've got that's still in primer, when I paint that one, it will be an airbrush jobby. Because as I've found out, this plastic is not the best with dry brushing. It's not dry brushing friendly, as you can maybe possibly tell by the, 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 sort of leathery texture to it it's not the most dry brushing friendly hair dryer hair dryer complete grounds complete one last quick coat of this stuff one last blap. Again, a little thinner than normal, just so I'm not making lots of brush strokes. Not quite glaze thin, but pretty thin. Thin enough to cover up some of the gaps. Make it less patchy. Patchy, you say? Okay, so I'm going to put that down for a second. Did I get a fingerprint in that? No, good. I'll put my finger on it then. So I'm going to rinse the brush off. And for the eyes now, we are now going to go in. For the eyes only, we are actually going to go in with white. Because these aren't going to be white. These are going to be glowy red. So I need these to be white now. So while that's drying for a second, a quick look at chat. Uh, Let's have a look. When he's doing detail painting, while Dad does it when he has the craft knife in his hands doing denubbing. Oh, but texting me or distracting me. Uh, Lynn Dipple says, I looked for the in-store exclusive. I couldn't find it. Oh, well, can't afford one anyway. Um, just go onto the, excuse me, go onto the website, the Games Workshop website, and just type in Funko Pop. If it's available online outside the UK, you'll find it in there. If not, your local Warhammer store will have them. Uh, but yeah, they're like 10 quid over here, so... Do, do, do. Ascension Industries says stuck at work. Just want to pop in and say hey. Hope everyone is having a good day. Welcome Ascension Industries. You've probably already gone. That's only a shame with doing these. I, I missed the chat. Chat is real time for you, but on a five minute, ten minute delay for me because I'm doing something. Eric says, does anybody else realise Fox is actually getting something done today? I know. So I noticed that Eric definitely left Faffage this week. It doesn't seem right, does it? Says Chris. Right, it's all the spare ectoplasmic force he has spilling over from the Sazabi build. Hashtag science, says Skullfish. Uh, more Draca says, always do a water change after using Avalanche Sunset, <clears throat> Mephiston Red and Metallics. Absolutely. And always clean the living crap out of your brushes because they hold paint. Those three colours spent ages. Mm, 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 mm. Let's hope Fox had pre gerinatory questions for later on. Chris says he has a book. I have used most of them. I'm not sure there's any questions left in the book I can use that aren't like, why would you go to space? Because there's no way you can answer that without just a yes or no question. Right. Uh, people are talking about 80s TV. Be right back. Time to move the hose, says Lynn Dipple. What's that? Turn me back for two minutes and not using a dad device? Tut tut, says dad. I was literally getting a dot of paint. I'm not like Chris. I don't get a pot this tall and get a brush and go eh, and wiggle it around the edge and, and just watch my pot teeter. Yes. Uh, 
Executing order 66 right after I execute this pizza, says Schoolfish. Uh, puts hair dryer on melts plastic, says Eric Graham. There is a trick when you're doing hair drying. Don't use um, the hottest, hot, hot, hot setting of your hair dryer. Just use a, a low setting so it's more just air going past uh, and keep it moving. Don't just sit there like this because whatever plastic you've got, it will explode and melt. You get your hair bright and you're just doing this. Moving the piece around, you're moving the hair dryer. It's not really the heat that's doing the job. It's the air blowing across the surface of the model and evaporating off the water so the paint can dry. With acrylics, it's a very quick process. If it was like a, you know, other paints can take longer. You wouldn't hair dry, for example, a thick oil paint. I mean, you wouldn't do that anyway. But with acrylics, you can be quite quick. As long as you're moving everything constantly, it's not on a high heat and you're not just holding it in place. Because if you, if you sit there for like a minute or so, two or three minutes on your model, even moving it around, it will get very hot and you will start to see melting and, and bending. But if you just quickly blap in it for five or ten seconds, you're absolutely fine. Thanks, Fox. Found them. They cost fourteen ninety nine. Okay, that's, that's about ten quid. Uh, Fox, would Wraithbone be good to lighten up the eyes before doing the glowing eyes? Um, I don't. I've not used Wraithbone. I do have Grace here. Um, uh, and I would say. If Wraithbone is anything like Grey Seer, it'll be a pain in the arse. Because Grey Seer is a really nice colour, but it's so transparent as a base coat. It's absolutely no use as a base coat whatsoever. So you could use Wraithbone. Um, but I'm not, I've not tried Wraithbone to try brushing it. And I do find, because these these aren't normal paints. These I think these are alcohol-based or a bit more lacquery than these. These are water-based. These, these, these Grey Seer and Wraithbone pots, I think they're more like Tamiya paints. And I did find they weren't fun to paint. So I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I would say if you're looking for non-brush paint, brush marky stuff, stick to your through and grey and then you're uh, on a coat of whatever it was, uh, Celestial Grey. So I'm going to do some more, I'm going to do some white on these now. Because like I say, if, if this was just like a, some white armour, if I was leaving these white, I could just do an edge highlight on them, for example, if it was armour shaped. And it would look like slightly, slightly dirty white. You, like I said before, you can't you can't paint something white and then be able to expect to be able to highlight it so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go in with the white scar white scar a little bit of the paint i mean you can see the difference it is a bright white color compared to uh all through and gray but it's just it's kind of hard to explain but it makes sense when you see it is the best way i can explain it so put that on there Let's do this. Let's do this. What can possibly go wrong? He says, and I mean, a lot of things can possibly go wrong. Again, it's a layer plate and it's quite thin. So you don't need to add really any extra water to it. And here we're going to go over. It's on the wet palette. So it's extra water in there. I'm doing it in light, thin coats because I don't want to, I don't want to suddenly just paint it white. If it comes on and it's a bit patchy, that's fine. I can do a second coat. I'd rather do that than do one big fat thick coat. Now I can see it's starting to flash off a bit, so I'm going to pull off away from that eye and not try it. There's some streaks on there, but I don't care. I'm not going to risk any more. I'm going to move away from that eye and go to this eye. See again how I'm using this joint here to move my hand around, and I'm, I'm using the brush like that. It's hard to explain that the way to use the brush without actually physically doing it in front of you. I'm not using the point. I'm, I'm putting the edge at the tip of the brush near the edge and then pushing it flat so it's closer to the edge and then just angling my hand around. And you can get some nice crisp edges doing that. It's, it's tricky. It takes a while to get used to it, but it is a good way to get some nice crisp edges without lots of wobble, wibble, wobble. It does help when there is some relief to the part. There's some edging there. There's a bit of an edge. Right, I'll give it a blast from, you guessed it, the hairdryer of happiness. If you ever... Um, watch one of my videos and at the end of the video after the titles are like an outtake of me doing a bit of beatboxing it's usually because i'm i've just done some hair drying and 
when I do hair drying, I do little bits of beatbox and stuff. I didn't do it then, but I get carried away sometimes. And sometimes I have like, I know how long to hair dry something because I have a little beatbox phrase that I, I sort of do out loud. And when that finishes, I know I've been hair drying it for long enough. It's like a little timing mechanism. Okay, this is being a bit awkward now. White is never the friendliest colour to paint with. Even now, it's given me some challenges. It just seems to be white universally, no matter who makes the paint, white universally seems to be a bit of a scratchy paint. It's got a bit of a grit to it, a bit of a chalkiness. And it, it may well be just because of whatever they have to put in paint to make it white. Whether it's zinc oxide or, I, don't know, I doubt it's chalk, but you never know. Some sort of white pigmenty, it's very powdery pigment, so whatever white pigment's made of. It could just be a limitation of, actually, if you want white paint, you've got to live with what you get. That's the way them cookies crumble, my friend. Maybe. Oh, look at that. I've got some white paint on the yellow. Not a worry. Get my brush wet. Wipe it back. Because it's because it's thin. Because it's watered down a little bit. I can just wipe that away. If that was just neat from the pot, I'd have to repaint that yellow bit. And that would be sadness. But Because I'm doing it as almost like a thick glaze more than anything else. I can just get the brush wet and quickly wipe it away. It's fine. Okay, so there we go. And by virtue of doing it like a glaze, it also means, it's like a thick glaze, but it also means that for some parts of the eye, the the greys underneath will actually be a bit more, they'll show through a bit more. And you can use that to your advantage because if the white paint is a little thinner at the bottom of the eye, it looks like a bit of shade. See, I've splodged a bit on the yellow there again, so I can just go and quickly zip, zip, zip. There you go, whip it away. Nobody will ever see it. There you go, perfect. Uh, and it puts a little bit, of, you can see a gray, a little bit more gray at the bottom of the eye, which looks fine. It looks like a little bit of depth to it. And then when you put a glaze over that, or you, you red or whatever color, it will just, that will still show through a little bit and you'll almost have a little bit of shading on it. So I'm gonna give that a blast with the hairdryer. Doodle -doo -doo. Keplunk. Keplunk. Uh, and I'll do a bit more white in the middle. Just in the centres, get a bit more white on the brush. Focus a bit more white. Just in the, I'm going to actually get some more paint onto my palette actually because I'm running out. Hang on, that is the paint, the white scar, and a tiny amount of white scar. He says, putting a whole brush full on there. Never mind, moving on. There you go, nice and shiny. Oh, brush full across the universe. Right, so a little bit of paint on there. A bit of white scar going on. We're going to do a little bit of a semi glaze just in the middle, sort of a circle shape. I'm trying to, I'm not brush stroking the paint, and I'm trying to just like basically place the, this slight glaze on the top now just so it can go circular by itself. And then I gave, I gave up on that actually. Forget it, what I just said, ignore that. It was too thin. I just, I'm just brushing it on. Just trying to keep it kind of in the middle. So that effectively, it won't really come out on camera and it's very subtle in real life, but we basically have the brightest white area is in the center. And then the out, outer edge of the eye is a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit grayer, but not much. Blow on that. Give it a quick blast with a hairdryer. And then I think we're done with the eyes for the moment. Just enough to flash it off so it doesn't dribble or run. Okay, so there we go. So we've got some nice white eyes ready for glazing later on to get the, the glowy effect. Perfect, perfect. Now I say, if you were doing this without airbrush and stuff, it'd be a lot easier just to airbrush these. And what would actually be easier is to airbrush them on before you do the base color and then mask them off somehow if you had little circular masks. Not the easiest way to do it, but it'd be 
slightly better. You could get, you could, if you're careful, you could airbrush the centers as brilliant white. Start with that and then airbrush the center and get a nice fade. But that requires some airbrush skill. So you can see the difference there. We've got the eyes there, and we've got the Aquila, which is just the Celestra Grey. Uh, and the all through in grey on top of the Celestra Grey, and it's it still looks white, it's just not quite as bright white. But that's the idea. So I'll put that to one side. Uh, have a quick look at the chattings. Let's quick swig of the coffeeings. Uh, let's have a look. Beep, 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 for, uh, we've done that one. Uh, I cheated with my Funko Pop Smurf Marine, but I base coated the eyes with Iron Hand Steel, then the top right with Necron Compound. Let them dry. Uh, slap it on with Tamir X27 like a true heretic. What's Tamir X27? I don't know what that is. Uh, Iron Hand Steel, then the top right with Necron Compound. Let it dry. Like a tree. Oh, do you mean is that like a just a gloss coat? So you just did them like a shiny silver? That's fine, doesn't matter. Uh, Lynn says, Yes, the Games Workshop stuff is a bit pricey because of import charges, I think, especially when a can of Citadel spray is $20. Uh, yeah, all Games Workshop make all their stuff in Nottingham. Well, 99% of their stuff is made in the UK, Nottingham, so I suppose they have to charge more overseas because they've got to send it over there and pay all the import costs. Uh, Lynn's talking about, yeah, they've got the shipping and handling and stuff. Uh, Eric says, yeah, luckily I live in a college town, so I've got two game shops I can go to. I don't know if you'll be able to get these in non-Warhammer shops. I don't know if you can. You might be able to, I don't know, but they might be Warhammer shops only. Lynn says, she lives out in the middle of nowhere. The biggest town that has one is two hours away. Yeah. And what I would say, Lynn, is... is um, Because you do live nowhere near a, a Games Workshop or a Warhammer store or anything like that. It might be better just to, rather than order one thing and then pay shipping and handling on it, why not just sort of keep keep a list of the things you want to order? Because what they do is all Games Workshop stores, after a certain amount of the value of the order, they give you free shipping. Um, so it might be worth just looking at that. Just keep a list of the things you want to order. And when you've got, it, like in the UK, it's something like 45 quid or something like that, or I can't remember, 100 quid or something like that. Um, Forger would do the same, so... It's often worth just bulking up your orders, stuff you need, like you want one of these, and then a month now you might think, oh, I fancy this kit. Just keep a list. And when you've got, when you suddenly realise you've hit that trigger point, order them all at once. And you might wonder why, obviously, I'm saying this when this show is supported by goblingaming.co.uk, where you can get everything for 20% less. It's because Goblin don't ship to the US, and Lynn's in the US, so there you go. Oh, it's clear red. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, yeah, you're using Tamir paints on a, on a Warhammer thing, and that's heresy, and you're just banned. Uh, you're not a mod anymore. <laughs> yeah, I've done clear red over silver. That's fine. You don't have to use Citadel paints to paint Citadel to paint Warhammer stuff, but you know that. A uh, good idea, Fox. Yeah, yeah, it's just worth it. If you're outside, if if you're somewhere that say Goblin Games can't ship, obviously, uh, and Games Workshop stores. If your only choice is a Games Workshop or a Warhammer store or a local game store, uh, Games Workshop do do that free shipping over a certain amount. And I'd say in the UK, it's like forty five quid or something i know forge world is like a hundred and something quid but it's worth it it does mean you, you can't have your stuff there and then but hey it's free shipping Ding. right so what we've we done we've done the white we've done that uh more dracker says in australia it's anything over 85 australian dollars 85 australian dollars is about 70 trillion billion pounds or 80 12 billion dollars i think isn't it or something <laughs> just joking just joking Right, so we've done the white bits. Uh, we have to do the... We've got a gold bit to do. $65 US, says Mordraker. There you go. Got a gold bit to do. I need to go over these silver bits again, because as you can see, remember I've said this in the past about acrylic paints. As I've been handling this, it's taken the paint off the edges there, because it's a water-based acrylic. Because I've been handling it there. So do keep your eye on that when you're painting. It's not, it's not a problem. I can quickly go over it with some lead belt, because I've not shaded that yet. But do keep that in mind. Uh, when you're doing this. Luckily, it's been fairly tough on the head. I've not taken anything off on there. But yeah, acrylic water-based paints, they do come off with handling, so be careful. Uh, right, so we need to do... Uh, I'm going to... Um, if if Simon, Simon's not watching, I don't think, but if he was, he'd, he'd complain now because um, I'm going to put some metallics on my wet palette. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Just purely because I haven't got anything else to use as a palette, so I'm going to have to use my wet palette. Uh, I need to do a little bit of gold. So for this, this is the base colours again. So we're just doing base colours. A bit of retribute. 
extra arm. Little bit of retributor armor. Retributor armor. Uh, you're gonna put this on now. Yeah, Simon will be complaining now because I'm doing this on a wet palette. <laughs> but and he is right with metallics. You don't really want to add to do it on a wet palette because you really don't want to thin them at all if you can avoid it. Purely because um, it will affect how the metal flake floats in the suspension. It'll spread out. It'll surface tension will be all affected and stuff. And it's true. So normally, I mean, what I would quite often do is, I mean, I do sometimes do it on my wet palette, but if I have something to use as a normal palette, I do sometimes do it on just a bit of card or something. But I did have the uh, Games Workshop wet pa uh, palette book, but I've used all that. So, yes. But I'm going to do it on the wet palette. Sorry, Simon. Ateris is in. Uh, happy Sunday, everyone. Uh, welcome, Ateris. Hello, Joe, says Funko. Yep, it's the Funko Pop uh, unpainted Space Marine. One that comes just in primer grey. I am painting it as an angry marine. If nobody's, if you weren't here at the start, I'm painting it to look like an angry marine with rude words and everything else. Yes, there will be rude words on it. So yes, I've got some freehand inking to do later on at some point. Uh, now I'm not going to be adding any extra water to this uh, retributor armor. I'm using it. It's basically straight from the pot, but with a little bit of moisture from the wet palette. My wet palette is not wet. It's just moist. It's a moist palette. So we're going to add a little tiny, I'm just, that's the wrong brush. I want my artificer, artificer, because I like a nice bit of artificing. When I need to do some artificing, it's my artificer that I always call them. So we'll get that there. A little bit of gold. And we're going to very gently, very carefully, paint the Aquila on the gun. I have to say, I do love Retributor Ram. It's such a beautiful colour. Now, you remember I said before about it's not always about doing pointy, using the point on the brush. When it comes to metallics and some non-metallics, metallics are actually very, very genial. They're very forgiving. And they do, for the most part, tend to flow perfectly. They tend to go where you put them. So, for example, painting these little bits of fe these little feathers on the Aquila, I can actually go in with the point of the brush and just gently drag it along. Because for the most part, the paint will behave, follow the lines, and go exactly where I want it to go. And Retributor Armour, Metallics are often quite good at that, but Retributor Armour is the most forgiving. It really does behave wonderfully. So I can, in this case, use a bit more of the point. A little bit, not massively, but a little bit. And get away with it. Watch this is on camera for me. My mat's my guide and I'm moving it all the time. I'm going very slowly now. Hello, Dave Barker. What are you doing, you nightmare person. Didn't work though, because I'd just stopped brushing at that point. I don't know. You ne'er do well. <laughs> Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Now, if you would somehow make a spider appear on my desk, or a wasp or something, then yeah, then I would absolutely poop myself, and I'd, I'd just mispaint the whole thing. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to fall for your ruse. Your shenaniganery. Shenaniganery. It's not a real word, Max. Right, so we're going to... Again, I'm, I am using the point, but I am... Pulling the brush where I want it to go as best as possible. I find that sideways. I'm always trying to pull the brush on the left or down towards me. Pushing the brush up is never a good idea. Never be pushing the brush. It's never going to work if you push the, push the brush. So I can often do it like this. Because then again, we're doing it like this. I can just use that joint there to get some movement. I'm not waving everything around. I'm going sideways. I'm letting the paint do the work. I'm just touching the point of the brush to the surface I want to paint. 
and I'm letting the paint do the work for me through its own surface tension. So now I know I'm not too worried about the edges too much because I know there's going to be a shade over this and it will actually tidy up the rough edges. But for the most part, I'm trying to be as neat as possible. You get to see to me to get to see me doing careful painting now and everything and all that and everything. Beauty is, of course, if I had jumped then when Dave called me, I'm only painting over flat my fist and red, so I just touch in the red. So it wouldn't have been the end of the world. At least he had the good grace to wait till I'm doing a bit where there's not been any dry brushing. Otherwise there might have been swearings. I like the way even the skull on this is kind of chibified. It's kind of adorable. Now I'm just flattening the brush down. I'm touching the brush to the surface, the raised surface of the wing. And I'm just pulling it along, pushing it down a little tiny, tiny bit so it splays out just the tiniest amount and covers that surface, but it's nice and flat to the surface. Again, though, like I said when I was doing the Aquila on the chest, there is a certain gnarly texture just to the plastic and I can't get around that. I'm just having to remind myself it's not a gnarly paint job. I'm not, I've not messed up the paint job and done loads of brush marks. It's, it literally is the plastic is a bit, a bit rough around the edges in some places. It's not the best, smoothest plastic in the world. But hey, it's a Funko Pop. So I've splodged a bit there on the top of the skull. Not a problem. I can touch that in in a second with some Mephiston Red. A little corner of the wing to do. I do like a nice bold red, red and yellow together. And yellow and red together, says Jim Lee. Hey Jim, welcome. Yeah, it does work nicely, doesn't it? Carefully trying to get that edge. But not too obsessively, because there is going to be a shade over that. So that'll, that'll do for the gold. As I say, I, I can see from here it's a rough edge around some of the... I've not cut the edge exactly. It's a little bit hokey around the edges. But again, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Because you're going to get Reichland Flesh Shade over that. And that's going to go around all the edges and hide all those sins. So you can be a little rough and ready. Uh, there's no gold gold to go on the bonds. Uh, I've got any other gold to go? I don't think so... I've missed, a, I've missed a load of red on the skull on the chest there. That's a bit, a bit horrendous. Hang on. It's a bit rubbish. Hang on. Quick fix. Now again, yes, I've just been using gold paint. And I'm now putting red on there with the same brush. But it's going to have a shade over that bit, so it's not the end of the world. While I've got the red, I can touch in that bit there. There we go. Done and done. Okay, so that's there. So what I can do now is... What's next? What's next? What next? Uh, what time are we on? We are on five o'clock. Uh, next is we can do some shady shade shade shades. So we're going to use uh, Agrax Earthshade on the... On the and I know what to do. Hang on, before I do that, I need to go and fix... Do -do -do -do. A terrorist says, not going to lie. Wow, classic has me bad at the moment. I tried World of Warcraft once, I think, and it lasted about 10 minutes, and it bored me senseless, so, yeah. Didn't get very far with it. It's just not my thing, I don't think. That's that that hardcore sort of RPG-type game. It says me playing flipping Borderlands and Destiny and Fallout. <laughs> yeah, that's very light, though. Um, what was I going to do? Oh yes, I need to touch in the little bits of the metal silver areas that have been rubbed away by my manly grip, by my uh, action man kung fu grip action. Again, Simon will be panicking now and cursing me because I've put my lead belcher on my wet palette. 
but it's just a little tiny bit, it's not the end of the world. So I'm just going to quickly go over that. I want it to be a little bit thinner than normal, just so I can not put massive brush marks in. So yeah, when, you, when you're working with acrylics, that's why mounting your model like I have to something, if you're using this, if it's a normal mini, get like a painting handle or something similar, it'll be fine. If, you've, if it's like this, though, it's a bit bigger, mount it to something else, it's just stuck on an old uh, brush cleaner pot. But you're still going to have some situations where you have, you've handled the model, and it's not unusual for the paint to come off. Because at the end of the day, acrylics are delicate wallflowers. They're not hardcore paint. If you painted this in lacquers, this paint wouldn't be going anywhere. If you're painting acrylics, acrylics are delicate. Uh, and I'll be honest, uh, this, this paint, the Citadel paints, it's not as bad as ammo. Ammo by MIG paints are by far the most delicate paints I've ever come across. You just look at your model and all the paint just falls off. Which is fine if you're doing a, a model that's got a lot of weathering and chipping on it. It's fine because you're just basically adding actual chipping to it. And you can you can use that as actual chipping detail. Uh, but on some things you might not want that. So Depending on what you want. Like I said, I could have left that, but this is bare metal. And you don't get paint chipping on bare metal. So, yeah, that doesn't really make any sense. I'm going to quickly touch in one bit that has not got any paint on it for some reason. That I've just spotted now, which is down here. That keeps moving. I apologize if my head keeps getting in shot, by the way. Sometimes I just get carried away doing the actual painting. And I know my pan's probably in the way for a lot of this. But you get what you get. touching these little details here I've caught that with my hand at some point and it's just gently rubbed a bit of paint off so yeah do be aware with acrylics it's going to your paint's going to rub off if you're handling it even if you wear gloves it's just the, the mechanical physical action of you know rubbing against the paint it's going to rub it away but it's easily fixed so if, if it was the yellow I wouldn't care because that would just become a paint chip because it would just be showing the primer or the plastic underneath which is fine but it's, it's this it's the metallic colours of the bare metal and you don't get paint chipping on bare metal so there you go there you go fixed i think that's all of it uh yards i think right so time we're on five o'clock i shall do some shades shady shade shade, shade. then then uh, we will do some stickery giveaways and then i think we'll call it a show so we're going to do on the red we're going to do the same shade that we used on the yellow avalanche sunset i think or should we use null i don't know i don't want it to be too dark but i don't know if avalanche sunset will be dark enough <sighs> mm. now we use null oil on the red and we'll use null oil on the silver uh, on the gold we'll use a little tiny bit of reichlin flesh shade and on the rubbers the blacks will use null oil as well uh, average model says back in just time for it to end. we've got another hour yet average modeler don't worry so we're going to start off first with the shade that i don't actually have in front of me because i'm a spoon yeah it's my noon oil there is my noon oil yeah that's it so stick dad device da, 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 dad device right so first of all time for some noon oil yeah that's it so stick so let's have a look we've got a big shade brush big fat shade brush would be nice that is my big shade brush i don't need a massive shade brush but i want a good shade brush uh doo -doo -doo -doo. base 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 how low can you go shade brush there we go should be more than about the right size lynn says about time dad device yes well i haven't needed it yet Use both contracts and classic methods on my ridge runner. Got great results, says Eric. I was doing a Borderlands paint scheme on mine and used the contrast paints for the metallics to look like Borderlands paint job. And it kind of worked really nicely. They are really great for that watercolour effect. So, uh, on the head bonds, there are, there's not that much to paint in metallic, in uh, null. Just, quite literally, the tubes and the metal there and that bit on the back. So, we'll do that first. Uh, now, if you, you've used shades before, you know how it works. You don't think about this. You just do what Ted says, that I can't pop it in because I'm not like Chris, but you just slap it on. 
and we've painted these like the grey colour because we want it to look like rubber. So it may take more than one coat. It will take more than one coat. And whereas with the shade normally you're just painting it on to go into the recesses, for this we actually want it to darken the whole thing down, apart from that metal bit where it's just to the recesses. So we're just going to blop this on. Whoops. Blop this on. Hope it doesn't pull up like that there. Suck that away. If it starts to pull up, I'm just going to blep it with the brush. Suck that in. Suck it in. Let's get my visor on so I can see properly what I'm doing. Uh, let's just put this down there. So you hope you can see this. I, I apologize if it's like totally out of view or in the wrong place. I'm not really sure what you can see without turning around and looking at the telly, which is not ideal. So we're going to get that on there, get it around the edge there. Whenever you're doing a shade like this, even if it's just a sh if it's a shade for a shadowy effect, you want to go right up to the edges of the thing you're putting the shade on, because you want it to create that demarcation between the two different colours. It will go more transparent once it dries, so don't worry. But do make sure it's not pooling up like again down here where it's. I need to suck the excess out. We will do more than one coat there, so that's fine. Just get a little excess out there. There you go. Because it will go transparent. So if you see a solid black line there now, when it dries, that won't be a big solid black line. It'll fade a bit. So that's that. I need to do this bit on the back. These are metallic, so I can just quite simply pile this stuff on. There we go, just follow the edge. And this again is just an initial coat. We might do different shades on the metallics depending on what effects we want. If we want it to look a bit dirty, I might do an Agrax or a shade or something else. So that'll do for the head. I'll put the head over there. I'll put the head on top of something so it's not resting the tubes. Uh, for the body fur here, we need to do similar. So first of all, the gun area. Now I'm going to do this on the red and the metal so I can kill two birds with one stone and do the red and black, the red and silver parts all at the same time. I'm going to try and avoid the yellow parts though because they've been shaded with the Agrax and I want that to stay that way. So for this, we're just going to go off. And again, like we did with the Agrax, I'm not worried if it comes on patchy or the bit where it's darker than the other bit because we are going to bring this back like we did with the with the yellow so for the most part so we can afford to just be a bit handy with this a little bit handy I've got to be careful around the aquila because I don't want to I don't want to shade that in black too much although if I do it's not a problem I can just go over it again with the gold it's fine so we'll just make sure we go over all the metallic parts reasonably carelessly <laughs> the only problem with doing this actually doing some work on this show is i don't get to read what you guys are talking about because i'm too busy doing the actual work here which is for me a bit rubbish i feel like i'm ignoring you but i'm actually doing work so it's a rock and a hard place for me really <laughs> Between the rock and hard place. Oops, knocking the camera. Of course I am. Uh, we're going to get generous with the wash down there on the inside. If I go a bit heavier with the shade on the inside of the rifle, where it's hard to see, it covers some sins because it just looks like it's more in shadow than the other side of the rifle, which is the bit you can see. So it kind of gets away with that little bit. Okay, to paint things. I don't really want to get it on that yellow between the two between the red parts of the scope, but it may end up going in there anyway. If it does, eh well, not much I can do about that. And when you're doing a shade, it does always look a lot ter more terrible when you're actually putting the shade on than before it dries. Once it's dried, it suddenly won't look terrible anymore. 
you'll be fine. Trust your Uncle Fox. So we're going to do black on these red parts here as well, like on the knees. And I'm just letting it go right up to the edges. And apologies if this is all out of shot or in the wrong place. It's not ideal. I did go a bit over there. Careless, I'll splob it up. I'll suck that up with the brush. There you go. If you make a splob, just suck it up. Suck it up. Suck it up, Marine. I can be a bit more generous on the feet down here because we're going to put earth and dust on them later. So I don't need to worry too much about splobs. Well, I will try and clean them up. But it can be a bit more slapdash. Slapdash, you say? Indeed, slapdash. Like I'm, there's some blue tack here covering up a bit of the red, but that's fine. We'll come back to that later. It's not a problem. Bit on that. Around the edge. Diddly bomb, a diddly bomb, a diddly bomb. Uh, we need to go over the grey inner tubey parts, the rubber sooty parts. Here I can be quite generous. Because it's supposed to be quite dark in there. I'm going to run it into that gap between the upper and lower leg armour. You see I'm using a big brush for this, by the way. I'm not being delicate with it. I'm going to run it into that gap between the upper and lower armour on the leg. It will zip into the gap quite nicely. And saves me then having to worry about having not painted it. Because although I've not painted in there, I have done the shade. And that will just look dark like it's part of the rubber suit. Now I've splashed a little bit there but I can just get the brush damp and just wipe that away. It's a bit like doing a pin wash really. Really? So that's on there. A little bit of that in there. Cool beans. Cool beans, my homies. All right, so that's that. On the inside of the armage. Armage on. Again, not being super careful. I've got some nice crisp edges to work along, so I'm not being super careful. I mean, careful, but not like delicately using a small brush or anything like that, as you can tell. But I'm not being careless, I'm just being relaxed and easy about it. I know the brush is kind of sticking into the camera right now. My apologies. We've got the elbow armor here. We can have a nice big dot of it. There we go. Now some of that's gone onto the little rim of the pauldron, so I can just suck that up with the brush. There we go. Suck it up. Suck it up, Marine. A lot of it you just the trick with the shade is just to let the shade do the work. It's it's going to have a natural flow to it. So don't put it on thin and delicate like a paint. You want to go in not too heavy handed because it will it will dry stodgy if you go too heavy. But you want to put it on thick enough that it's allowed to flow and do its job basically. I'll put some on Das Skull. The skull is not on the wings though but on the skull. So I'm going to touch it to the edge of the skull. It'll go into that little gap around the top. It'll build that up and it'll hide those sins where I had maybe not the smoothest and straightest of paint finishes between the red and the yellow. There we go. Not on the white wings. We're going to slap it all over the uh, pauldroniums. Moosh that around a bit. There we go. It gives a nice contrast between the red and the yellow. It'll gather around the edge. Oops. Gathering too much around the edge if I'm not careful. Gather around the edge. It gives a little bit of a shadow around the edge of the red. Where the red meets the yellow. Doesn't matter if it's patchy in the middle. Because again we are going to dry brush over these. I'll just suck some of that up because it's a bit thick. 
it went a bit where I didn't want it. The thing with shades is <clears throat> if you if it dries <clears throat> if you put it on too thick it can dry really nicely and it's quite subtle but if you put it on too thick and it really pulls up then you can end up with a blob like a physical 3D men three dimensional blob that's a, a physical raised up thing and especially in like little 90 degree corners like here where you've got the yellow and the red pauldron edges if it goes down there and pools you'll get rid of that crisp square edge and you'll get like a curve because it blobs up and it just pools and you want to avoid that so when I've done this I want to drag some of that from there and just drag it up let's drag it up get most of it off on the brush and then suck the excess up I don't need to be a solid black line so I don't need it to pool up quite that much just keep an eye on that but I want it to be a nice crisp edge between the two colors uh, we have there's no other red on there I don't think oh there's a belt I forgot the belt there we go the belt buckle lovely jubbly belt buckle there you go there you go lovely lovely that's the red bits on him uh, then we have on the tip bonds I forgot to do oh you know what I forgot to do I forgot to do these bits I've also seen a dot of red paint that's escaped there onto the yellow for some obscure reason so yes I'm going to go round the edge so I do I get the shade on the yellow but it will pull into the edge apart from there it will pull into the edge of the red and become like a shade line it won't just be like paint that's splobbed on so it will pull into the that little 90 degree edge it'll be more subtle when it dries okay so there we go can go on that run it around the edge zip 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 do some you know if you got if you want to do a, <coughs> a shade <coughs> between two colors you have to get the shade on both colors if it's a demarcation between two different colors you know what I'm going to do <coughs> I'm going to be devious here I'm actually going to put the shade in here all on this flat surface because I want it to look like a, a recessed panel that's got some sort of purpose so I'm going to actually put it in there because who knows this might be like some <coughs> <coughs> some surface where my voice is going funny some surface where you have a big thing that plugs into the back of his helmet so why not make it look gunky and grimy by just filling it with uh, with shade makes it look a bit different <coughs> so I'm filling that in I shall get the shade off the brush that I've got on there and I'm just going to suck up the edges because when I put this head down it'll all run downwards into the bottom and I don't want it to pull up in the bottom and look darker it's supposed to be a grimy dirty sort of look so there you go suck up from the excess there and from inside because I don't need to be three-dimensional okay and now we've got the tubes again we've got the before I do that though I'm gonna quickly give it another shake shades do separate out here's the golden rule if you're using a normal shade that's not a gloss shade always shake the living crap out of it quano man is in hi quano man spid is also in welcome spid spid somebody was asking about the best coffee beans earlier on go up to the top of the chat at the very beginning if you can go that far someone's asking about coffee beans uh yeah if you use a shade straight from the bottle that's shaking the crap out of it it'll come out glossy especially agrexer shade it'll come out glossy and then you'll just be sadness so always shake your shade gentlemen shake your shades now there are gloss shades which you obviously you want them to be glossy shake them anyway just to get the pigment all around moving around but a gloss shade is just a normal shade without the matting agent so if you don't shake your shades all that matting agent might be at the bottom of the pot <laughs> so you're just going to paint a gloss shade on because shades by the nature are by default are gloss and you add a matting agent to it to make it not shiny If you're going to make your own shade uh, you could make a magic wash which is like pledge two times more shine or future or clear or whatever it's a gloss acrylic varnish you would add ink or paint to that 
which will make a gloss shade and then you would add a matting agent to that something that would then turn it from a gloss product to a matte product that's how you'd make your own shade now I know Tamiya do one but that's for Tamiya paints not for normal paints now what I'm going to do as well is I'm also going to put some uh, not yet though I'm going to put some shade in that little gap there on his helmet where the vent is but I'm not going to do it now because I need to do that and turn it that way so it darkens it up so I'm going to leave that for now so the shade dries correctly on the rubber tubes because <clears throat> if I do if I do that now and tilt it back it may affect how it dries on the rubber tubes and I don't want that uh, okay so that's one coat of chenille oil chenille oil what the hell is chenille oil I don't know it's one coat of null oil uh, on there I'm going to leave that to dry for a bit oh I didn't do his back I did his I did the back of his knees but not his actual butt area Simpleton Fox, you're Simpleton. There we go. Right, so that's his butt area has now got a shade on it. I'll probably, I'll need to go and do a second coat, especially on the rubber parts like the undersuit <clears throat> and the tubes on the head. I'll need to do, I've done two coats on the tubes. I'll probably need to do three coats, maybe even more. So I'll probably do them off camera later on and I'll have it ready for next week. Uh, I'll need to do more on the, on the weapon. I'm not gonna do more on the red parts. They've got enough now. That's enough to start the next process next week. Uh, I think as well on the weapon. I put the lid back on that before it goes wrong. Uh, what else we need to do now? Quickly, anything else? No, I think we're good there. Okay, so that's the null null down. <coughs> Next week, <coughs> excuse me, swig of coffee. Throat's going. Next week, I'll finish the extra coat of null oil on the rubber suit parts. What we'll do is we will sort out the red do some dry brushing on the red to bring that back uh, we will do any other shades oh, I know what we can do I know what we can do uh, hang on right down there I need uh, I need where is it yeah is my writing flesh shade that's Agrax don't want that there we go right on flesh shade on the gold I'll shake that shake your shades uh, Spitty Kuwait says, are Gundam markers actually markers like Sharpie or brush tip paints? They are markers like Sharpies. They just got, I think they're enamel paints in them, basically. Uh, Reichland Flesh Shade is a brilliant colour for gold over Retributor Armour. I apply it the same as a normal oil. It just gives a wonderful warm gold effect. We've got more to do on that, but to start with, it just darkens it down nicely. And gives a wonderful gold effect. Now you notice again how I'm going around the edges. That's so the Reichland flesh shade can pile up around the edges of the gold bit and give a shadow because it will dry more transparently. So we're going to put that on there. That will dry nicely. Just for the gold. Uh, I didn't. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I forgot all the bits on the back. Oh, you spoon, Fox. You spoon. Doing half a job here. I got carried away and everything. It's because I'm talking and everything. I didn't do half the metal bits. Right, let's get the null oil back. Hang on. Everybody hold that thought. Do 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 do. Right, we'll bring the shade brush back. Oh. Let me just blow on my Reichland so it sets a little bit. Uh, we need to still do these bits on the back here. So hang on. Let me get some more nulling oils. Need to go over the shiny, shiny rockety parts. Oops. Again, being quite generous. There's no point being delicate with the shade. You want to get it on there. It's it's all about what you do to bring the colour back once the shade is on. It's like everything. You start dark and work your way up to light. So darken everything down, like I did with the dry brushing. You get everything dark and looking terrible. And then it's the next steps after that that bring it back and recover it. It's all about that. You're not adding a shade. If you want a metal to look used, you don't put on the shade to give it the used look. You put the shade on to get everything dark, and then it's what you do after that that brings out the used look because you bring back the shiny parts and the light parts and the dark parts. And it's kind of hard to explain. You, you add the shade globally, and then it's the fettling you do after that that makes it look used. It's not. You're not carefully putting shade where you want it to look a bit darker. You put shade everywhere and it's everything else you do after that that makes it look darker. So I'll put that there. Right along the edge. 
Mm-mm. Now you don't have to use Citadel Shades. There are alternative ways you can do this. Uh, for null oil effects, you can use inks, black inks. I wouldn't recommend just using paints thin with water because we've, we've had this discussion about thinning and diluting. You want it to act like a shade. You want it to have the same surface tension like a shade. That's all part of what a shade does. You want to make your own shade. You can use inks or paints, but if you use that, you need to use a glaze medium, not water. A glaze medium will do what a shade does. It'll have this sort of surface tension where the pigment dries evenly, but does go into recesses to darken them down. If you do it with water, you're going to get tide marks and coffee staining. It's going to change the way the paint behaves. So you want to use a, if you're going to make your own shades, you want to use a glaze medium. And whether that's Lamian medium, if it's Citadel, or Vallejo's glaze medium, which is a glaze medium. There are also artists glaze mediums like um, Windsor and Newton and stuff. But I, I can't speak to the veracity of those because they're designed for artists, not for model painting. I'm sure they'll be fine. They're just the same thing. They might be thicker. They might behave a bit differently. So I don't know about those. Your mileage may vary. Now there's three little vents on the backpack here. I'm going to touch this brush. It's a massive brush. I'm going to touch it to those little recesses. And I'm not brushing it. I'm touching it to the recess. And the actual shade itself is going to flow into that recess. I'm not pushing down. I'm just touching it and then letting the paint go into the recess. And then we'll leave it. Some things you can just let capillary action do all the work, which is what that was. It's just sucking the paint in. I'm getting the excess paint out of these thruster areas here. Because I don't want it to pull up too much. We'll go back and do more of them later. If, you, if you've got a recess and, you want, and you're doing your shades and you want a recess to be dark, the temptation is to just blap the shade on and put a load of shade into that recess. Don't do that. Because again, the shade will pile up and it may, if you've got like a solid square edge like that and it piles up, it may make a curve. Add multiple coats of the shade rather than one big fat thick coat of the shade, like a paint. Like on these things here, I'll probably go in with the two or three coats of shade, just touching it in and let it build up slowly into a dark colour to get the darkness in the middle. You could paint it, but I don't like painting recesses. It's easier to use a shade that's designed to flow into them. Uh, I think that's all the metallics on there now, if I am not mistaken. I hope. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Right, so that's that. I can put the normal oil again as well. Ghost Lyle says a million, a million pineapples. But I read out the ones at the start. I'm not going to read them again. Right, so that's that one. Right, so what we got? So we've got that done. Uh, I've not put a shade on the white wings yet. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do on that. I'll tell you what I'm going to do on that. If I can find my medium. And uh, we have the shade. Null oil. Uh, I need something to mix on top. On two. Uh, I've not got anything I can mix on two. I'll use a... Okay. I've got a thing, of, a thing for pills. I'll use one of these. Actually, I don't need that much. Handy little thing, if you want a temporary palette, use the thing that pills came in. Here's what I'm going to do. I want to put a shade on to the white parts of the wings of the, of the acrylic. I don't want to just use normal nail neat because that's quite dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Lamian medium, which is clear glaze medium. I'm going to take one, two, three, four brushfuls of that and then I'm going to take some null oil and I'm going to take a small amount not a lot a little bit more maybe small amount like that and what we've just made is a glaze what we've just done is diluted null oil which is already technically a glaze anyway we've diluted null oil so that it's more transparent if you did that with water you'd be thinning it because we're diluting it, it's more transparent which means i can now go and put that over the wing over the wings of the aquila like this uh it's probably actually too transparent uh, just like that around the edge that's actually too transparent 
Give me a minute. Let me hair dry that and we'll, we'll add some more. Hair drying. Not exciting for you, I know. My apologies. Nearly done. Right, so what we'll do is we'll add a bit more because that wasn't quite enough. It's difficult to get it exactly right to know exactly when you're ready, but we'll add a bit more. But what we're doing is basically we're taking Norm Oil, which is already a transparent paint. There we go. Taking some Norm Oil and we're making it more transparent because we've added more of the clear acrylic paint that basically a, a shade is nor is, is is lamian medium with some pigment in it all we've done is we've increased the amount of lamian medium and reduced the amount of pigment relative to it it's still a bit light but it'll do for now i can add some more later if i need to so i can just touch it over the wing i can go a bit heavier than normal because i want it to show at least a little bit But not too heavy because then it'll just dry blobby and you'll lose all the detail. It'll just darken it down a little bit and go into the recesses. You might not really see it on camera, but it certainly is there. And it'll just give a little bit of relief. And when we go back later on, we'll do like a white highlight over the top bits. And you'll see the white uh, that goes over the top of that a bit more. It'll stand out over the uh, all through in grey. So that'll do for there. <clears throat> but I think that's going to do us for the painty part of today. <coughs> Uh, what time are we on? We are on 20 to 6. Okay, what we'll do, we'll do some stickery giveaways really, really quick. I'll just get this bit of wash out of there. Do, 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 do. Butcher that model says, when you cut your finger, should it be wobbly, dangling, and smelling salty of cheese, or should I put a plaster on it? Uh, I don't know. Does it taste good? Right, I'll have a quick look at chat before we do the stickies. Uh, I've missed a lot of the chat, so I apologise. I'm not going to go back now because we'll be here for another half an hour. Uh, Speedy Q8 said it was very late. Spec Storm says I finally got some Starship filth. Is it worth using it and sitting on non-oil while weathering, or is that some sort of redundant? Um, uh, Starship filth and Citadel and non oil they kind of do the same job. The difference is that non oil if you put that on and it dries, you can't get it off. If you put Starship Filth on, you can rub all the excess off and it just stays in the recesses. So it's two different things completely. The Norm Oil is designed to tint the surface and go into the recesses, whereas the Starship Filth, uh, you can slap it all over the entire model and then just gently rub it off where you don't want it to be. And it will tint it a little tiny bit, but not as much as the, as the, uh, the Norm Oil. So if you've got a, a, something with a lot of panel lining, for example, you can cover it in starship filth and wipe it all away and you've now got all the starship filth in your panel lines and a bit round some corners but other than that it looks fine uh the oil the norm oil you paint it on and that's it you can't get it off you can't wipe it off once it's on it's on it's dry, dry in a minute uh the brush poked my eye ow <laughs> uh, mr bit what color is this i don't know which bit you're watching ilta hi ilta by the way just answer some posh general knowledge questions now dave i have to ask the question are the answers correct <laughs> yeah i'm off today but i have two the next two weekends lynn says working so she's at least this year today anyway uh let's have a look let's have a look i'm just quickly whizzing through the chat uh is that painting or technically colouring in, says Speedy Quit about Gundam markers? It's technically, don't get Gundam markers, they're useless. They really are useless. You're applying enamel paint to a model, but they're, they're for kids, they're not. You can't get any, you get horrible paint surface that's all lined. and you No, know, just don't use Gundam markers. It's not worth, Unless it's like a little tiny, tiny, tiny raised detail or something. But then you can use, like, if it's a metallic colour, use a Sharpie. But yeah, just don't. Unless you're going to get the paint out of them, I wouldn't bother. They're just not worth it. Unless you want your model to look like complete ass, just don't. They're designed to be applied onto the bare plastic by a kid. So, uh, Spid says, belly now, feeling queasy, bench, whittles, wanger, which is a, a, a early plane, jet plane. Paint coat about to go on. Uh, sorry, you're not feeling very good there, Spid. Uh, Lynn Dipple says, pineapple a lot, and so does Mordrak. I'm not reading that lots of pineapples. I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to back out of that corner. 
Mundraka says the pineapples times 200. <laughs> Wait, I got stickers, says Lynn. <laughs> right, so what we'll do, I'll have a swig of coffee. Yeah, I, I can feel an enormous wee coming on, so I'll, I'll get the stickers done. Uh, now, I went to the sticker bag today. Uh, I've not got any dad stickers left, I don't think, not any big ones. So I just dug my hand in and randomly got some, and I got two of mine. And oddly, uh, an e-model sticker, bizarrely, I don't know what I was doing in the bag. I, was, I don't know why that's in my, in my not e-models bag, but it was. Uh, I, I contacted the guys at Goblin Gaming, see if I can get some more stickers off them. Uh, but I haven't got any of them left. So yeah, we've got three today. We've got two of mine, which is blasted by the light. Put it there. Uh, and one e-models one. E-models are my channel sponsors. Uh, they sponsor my channel, but they obviously don't have anything to do with this. They don't sell Warhammer and stuff, so... Uh, let's put Blap Spong and um, and Widget. No, it's Widget. There you go. Now let's, let's see what we've got. So as always, we're going to ask some questions. Uh, you can tell it's my sticker, my sticker, or the model sticker, you know which it is. Uh, I'll get the th questions out ready, because Dave says he sent me some. Let me get ready the stickers of uh, the questions of asking. If you get my email open. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, yeah, we've got three actually sensible questions. I assume they're all correct. I know one of them is correct for sure. Right, we're ready. Uh, all right, now we're going to be giving the stickers away. As always, if you've seen this before, you've all seen this before. Uh, I ask you a question. Whoever gets the answer right in chat first gets the sticker. Uh, now keep in mind, this chat here is the chat that YouTube sees. You see the chat differently. When you see the chat on your telly screen, you see your answer instantly because it's on your telly screen. That's not how it actually works. So just because you're first on your monitor doesn't mean you're actually first in the real chat. So do bear in mind it's this chat here, or to be absolutely sure, it's the chat that you see if you go and watch the stream later on on playback. It's that chat. Um, so don't 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 panic if you're first on your screen but you don't win the sticker. Uh, it's not widget. It's widget, Dave. Widget. Um, so yeah, I'm going to ask you a question now by this point in the show There's always a lag between the video that you're looking at with all your eyes and the chat itself You've been an hour and a couple of hours in so before we do anything You know what you need to do you need to hit the refresh button on your browser to refresh the page and when it comes back You need to drag the slider all the way across to the right hand side to make sure you're as up to date as possible So I'll give you a second while you hit refresh and drag refresh And drag refresh and drag re refresh and drag are we ready? Right. So we actually have some questions today. Dave sent us some proper grown-up questions. So I'm guessing Pip probably gave them to him. Yeah. So, are we ready? Everybody ready? Everybody, very buddy, everybody, right, buddy, why, buddy, 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 die, why? I'll put I'll put our little fella back here. I'll just turn my camera on for some dumbass reason. I don't know why. I'll put our little fella back here. He can go there. He's coming on now nicely. Right. So are we ready? Okay, everybody ready? First question. I'm going to make sure I'm up to date with my chat. Actually, that was a good idea. Right. First question. I can't believe he's giving me some sensible grown-up question. Everybody ready? Which country? Remember, I, I, if, if I, I need you to give me the same answer that Dave's given me. I don't know if these are correct. If they're wrong, you need to beat Dave up. Okay. First question. Which country calls its parliament... The Knesset. Go. Which country calls its parliament the Knesset? I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Diddly doo, diddly doo. There's one person who was in the chat would have got it straight away. Buzz Aldrin says Skullfish. Uh, Osric 9000 is correct with Israel. Yes, it is Israel call their parliament the Knesset. I think it's pronounced Knesset. Uh, it is, yes, Israel. So well done. Uh, who won that? I've forgotten already. Um, Oswick, yes, well done. Uh, now you all know what to do, but if you've not seen this before, if you win the sticker, what you need to do is you need to mail me at fox at modelmakingguru.com with your name, your address, so I can send a sticker out, and your YouTube name if it's not the same as if your name's Bob Smith, but your YouTube handle is Blebulon, 
uh, I'm going to have a sticker with Blebulon written on the back. So, uh, yeah, don't. I need to know your real name as well. Um, so, uh, Osric, I need to know which sticker you want. One of mine, or do you want the e-model sticker? Let me know which one you want, and I shall give you that one. Doodle 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 doodle. Uh, yay, Spong, please. Nice one. So there we go. Uh, if I also suck at sending stickers, it takes me months to send them out. Um, so even if you've won a sticker before, uh, you need to mail me each time anyway, just so that I've got, if I've got five emails from you, and now I've got five stickers going out to you. So Osric, well done, that'll go into the pile. I keep all the stickers to one side, and then I send them out in about six months time, you'll get them all. So don't panic if you don't turn up. Uh, right, so, well done. So yes, Israel has a parliament called the Knesset, as far as I know. I think that's right. Ready, next one. And again, I don't, I, I assume this is correct. Everybody ready? This will be a Google question because nobody will actually just happen to know this. Uh, oh, hello. Something happened. Uh, Frank Padula just subscribed. Frank, thank you very much for subscribing. Uh, I appreciate you coming along. I hope you're watching right now. But Frank Padula, that name rings a bell. Frank Padula. Why does that name ring a bell? I don't know. Welcome, Frank. Uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can make sure you get notified every time I do a live stream. Next question. This is Google time for most of you. But unfortunately, it's UK specific. I try not to do that, but never mind. Right, ready? Which UK TV channel started broadcasting in 1964? Go. Which UK ch TV channel started broadcasting in 1964? Which channel, Django? I need a channel, not a broadcaster. They're all broadcasters. I need a specific channel. It's not just a number. Nineteen sixty four. Which channel started broadcasting in nineteen sixty four? Wow, there's like six channels, dudes. At least people in the UK should have got this by now. Not a broadcaster, a specific. There we go. More Dracker 09 says BBC Two. Yes, thank you. BBC Two started broadcasting in 1964. Some of you just said BBC, but that is, of course, the broadcasting organization, not the channel. So BBC Two. Well done. Uh, more Dracker. Was it more Dracker? Yes, it was. I hope it was. I've just said it was. Uh, it's, well, it's jumped already. BBC. Yes, more Dracker 09. Would you like a model making guru sticker or the e models sticker? Which would you prefer? A widget. There we go. More Dracker. Well done. There you go. So well done. You've got yourself a e model sticker. I don't know why that was in my pack. Uh, right, so that leaves one of my stickers. There we go. So well done. Yeah, some of you said two and some of you said BBC, but I needed BBC two because there's more than one channel with a number two in it. Right, last question. Look, it's another Google one because, again, nobody would just happen to know this. If you happen to know this, I don't know. Chris says, remind me to bring my stickers on Thursday. Yes. Oh, Chris, by the way, I need to get more. I need more. I'm running out of stickers, my own stickers as well. So remind me to hit you up for some more. Right, last question. One of the fastest Google finds says more Dracker. Right, last question. How many years did Queen Victoria reign for? Go. How long was Queen Victoria's reign? Again, I don't know the answer, so I'm assuming what Dave has sent me is correct. How many years did Queen Victoria reign for? Seven minutes, says Chris. Uh, Lewis Williamson is straight in with 63 years, which, according to Dave... Why is the rum gone Barker, also known as Butch that model? It is the right answer. It's 63 years. So well done, Lewis Williamson. Uh, you have won yourself uh, falling over, dude. You have won yourself uh, the... One of my stickers. Williamson. So again, for all three of you, you know what to do. Send me an email, fox at modelmakingguru.com with your name, your address, and your YouTube name, if it's not your actual name. If your name is if you, if your name is actually Lewis Williamson, you can and good. You don't need to give me a YouTube handle. Uh, 
uh, and I'll get them sent out to you eventually. Now, I know, Lewis, you've won a sticker before, but I still need another email from you because I need as many emails as there are stickers going out to you. So you'll send me an email with your details. Uh, Paul DiTomaso has just turned up. That was awesome timing, Paul, because we're going to go in a minute. <laughs> oh, see, they, them was cultured posh questions, says Butcher, that model. Yeah, did you get them from Pip? Sorry. <laughs> Have you been reading again? Have you been doing big thinks again, Dave? Is that what it is? You've been doing some big thinking. No. Awesome. Awesome. Nice one. Cheers for those, Dave. Much appreciated. Like I say, I've got I've got the book of space things that Chris sent me. Um, but I think I've asked all the ones that are askable now. I'll have a double check there for next week. Um, right, what else have we got going on? So yeah, so what we'll do next week we'll carry on. Uh, I will be sorting out the red, we'll do some dry brushing and that on the red. Uh, and we'll be bringing stuff back then. And then once we've got everything done, we'll be then doing the nerve jangling bit. Of, <laughs> Dave says, yep, it was Pip. <laughs> the nerve jangling bit of painting on some of the um, the words and rude words at that, which I'll be drawing and showing, but not actually telling you what the word is out loud because of obviously monetization. I can't do that. Uh, but yeah, so we'll get that done. We've got lots of things to do. Lots and lots to do on this. I've also decided, uh, I was trying to decide what kind of base to put him on. Because he needs to go on a base. He can't just be a dude. I decided he works quite well on one of these. So what I'm going to do is I've got a lid from another um, brush soap thing. You can actually, I don't know if you can see on camera, but you can actually see the label. Master's Brush Cleaner because it's like a printed label. You can actually see it under the primer. So what we'll do is I've, paint, I've primed that in black. Uh, and that will actually be his base. It's just a lid from the Master's Brush Cleaner. It works quite well. It's free. It didn't cost me anything to get it. So that'll be his base. And we'll get him sorted out on a textured base. Um, but yeah, so next week we'll carry on with that. Uh, I might get some done later on today. I don't know yet. I might get some done later on tonight. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I might have been done a bit more by the time we come back next week. Don't forget, of course, uh, some updates for this week. On Monday, it is eModels live stream night. As always, me, Chris and Ted will be doing the eModels show tomorrow, Monday night, 9 p.m. BST on the eModels YouTube channel. Models. Uh, so don't forget that uh, I will throughout the week be doing more live streams with me working on the Sazabi. I've got lots and lots and lots of tedious dry brushing to do so I'll be doing more live streams they may be ad hoc you may get like five minutes notice I'll be doing them during the daytime maybe sometimes in the evening they will be ad hoc so either keep yourself glued to Facebook and Twitch and everything else my usual pages where I'll post up if I'm gonna if I'm doing one however it may well be that I don't get a chance to do that I might just go live so if you are a subscriber to this channel and you want to make sure you're around to watch those live streams hit the notification bell. It's normally next normally next to the subscribe button uh, but it's on the channel you can go to the channel homepage it'll be there somewhere wherever the bell appears hit that notification bell and in most cases YouTube are pretty good it will then um, notify you the moment the stream goes live and I, that's why i put a countdown on my streams this one's half an hour the other one is 15 minutes just so it gives people a chance to get the notification and then get into the stream you get 10 15 minutes to just get ready so that's why i do those countdowns so do come along i'll be doing loads of those don't forget of course on thursday this thursday if you're in the uk and you're not too far away this thursday chris ted and i and also dad and some others are going to come and join us um we are going down to emodels my channel sponsor emodels.co.uk we're going down to the store because we've got things to drop off, builds that we've got to give back to those guys. Ted's dropping off his four and a half foot long U-boat. I'm dropping off a couple of bits and bobs. I've painted my little tiny U-boat and a tank. Uh, and Chris has got some bits to drop off. So we're going down there. We're having a bit of a day out. We're not going to get there till probably around about lunchtime or later because we've got to get there. Chris has got to come up from somewhere down south that nobody understands. Ted's got to come from like, you know, the frozen north somewhere in Arctic somewhere. Uh, and I'm coming down. I'm going to see. I think I am bringing Tony, the mysterious uh, U Models builder that you don't often see. And he's never been in one of the live streams. Uh, but I'm going to see if I can bring Tony with me. So we are going down. There'll be good fun. Uh, people are bringing cakes. There's going to be donuts. Dad's going to bring some donuts. Do come along this, this Thursday, the 19th of September. Yeah, it's a work day, but hey. Uh, so do come along and join that. Uh, and, that's it. and then next Sunday, of course, I've got my live show again. So stay tuned. I've got more of these live streams for the Gumpler coming up, but make sure to hit that notification bell. Uh, before I go, don't forget, of course, that this channel is supported by Goblin Gaming. If you want to save up to 20% off RRP, or if you actually want to save 20%, it is 20% off recommended retail price on all Games Workshop, Malafau and Conflict 47, use Goblin Gaming. There's a link in the description below my video. Use that link as your main link. That will not only give you massive savings, 
it will also enable me to earn a little bit of income off that link because it's my affiliate link so if you want to get yourself some warhammer like one of these or any Warhammer stuff, Conflict 47, uh, or the other one, Malifaux, I always forget which one that's called. Uh, it's 20% off all RRP prices, and everything else they've got is also much reduced, but 20% off those three things. Save yourself some money. If you're in the UK or the EU, go to Goblin Games. Use my link, the one below. It's in all my videos. Store that as your favourite link and use that. Not only will you be saving massive amounts of money, you'll also be helping this channel by funding this channel and keeping the lights on, so I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, don't forget, like last of all, uh, tonight, 8pm BST, if Chris isn't too poorly sick with his uh, stop playing with the mat, I've got to... Ass, Revel, Airfix. I, that was a wheel of... It was a spinny wheel, but I don't know which way was good, but I don't know. Um, yes, don't forget, Chris, if, he's, if his headache's gone, I've not annoyed him too much. He'll be doing his live stream tonight at 8pm on his channel, Gross Models, for his Warhamster stream. He's working on Shouty Horse Dragon thing. Uh, so do go along and check that. If it's going there, I'll be in the chat. It might be. He says I'll be there in a couple of hours. Okay, as long as you're not too poorly sick. So I'll see you there for that, hopefully, unless I'm in the middle of my dinner. But that remains for me to say thank you very much for watching. Uh, take care of yourselves. I'll see you tomorrow night, and I'll see you throughout the course of the week on live streams. If you need anything... Why am I saying that if you need anything? If you need anything, give me a shout. That's, that does not how it works. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, yes, I shall say, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome like this little fella that you can't see. There you go. That little fella there you can't see. And I shall say, adios amoebas. I've got, hang on, I've got to find the right button now. Are we ready? I'm hopefully not going to mess it up. Adios amoebas. <laughs>